All right, guys, welcome to Action Living, and I'm your host, son, Drew Brandon. Who else we got in the studio? We got Mr. Jimmy. What's How you going doing, on, Jimmy? man? Oh, just another beautiful day in Dallas, Texas, despite all the rain we had yesterday. Cleared up, like, just in time, though. You it know? did, didn't it? So not too bad. All right, also, we got Sam the Mailman. How you doing, Sam? I am doing awesome, thank you, sir. Man, we had a uh, busy weekend for all of us, didn't we? Yeah, it was. Definitely was. I mean, we started, let's see, uh, Friday at the racetrack, the BMX races, the Super Nationals over uh, in DeSoto, Texas. Uh, you both got, both of you guys were out there for that. And Saturday, let's see, I went to the racetrack again. And uh, what did you do Saturday, uh, Jimmy? I uh, ended up going to the St. Paddy's Day Parade, which was uh, very eventful. <laughs> very eventful, okay. Very I eventful, can imagine. yes. Did, now, Sam, what was your Saturday consisting of? Uh, staying home, doing laundry, cleaning the house. Ooh, ooh a little static. Yeah, Is it's it gone good. now? Yeah, for some reason it's coming off of this mic. I'm not sure. Go ahead, though, Sam. What's up? Oh, I was just at the house cleaning, doing laundry, uh, watched uh, about four movies, just kind of took it easy. Four movies? Now, what were those? Uh-oh. Uh, the new Muppets movie. Oh, wow. We're going to have to switch out this mic. Yeah, let's here. switch that out. Okay. So Sam listened to the new, <laughs> he saw the new <laughs> Muppets movie. That's what we left off with the static problem. And I so hate that his mic is not in front of him right now, man. <laughs> so let's see here. Yeah, uh, Jimmy, a full day of uh, drinking and boozing it up on Greenville Avenue. It was. That means you probably ended the day with some green urine, correct? Um, You know what? I'm not even sure if I actually had proper green beer the entire night. Really? <laughs> yeah, I just now realized that. I don't think that I actually had... One single full green beer. You didn't get in the spirit of St. Patty's Day. Well, I, was, I got a green shirt day of on the way to the uh, the big parade. <laughs> oh, the I day always, of, okay. Yeah, I always wait till the last second, but uh, I ended up snagging a shirt just uh, just before taking uh, the train in. And um, but yeah, I just now realized I did not have a single green beer. You know, I forgot to even wear green on St. Patty's Day. I um, you get pinched a lot. No, I don't think anyone even, where I was at, I don't think anyone even realized it was St. Paddy's Day. Man, they're so busy, so much excitement, so much going on. This is a national event, you know, it's a huge event. In fact, the biggest national event that the uh, DeSoto Trek has had in the history of, of at least in the last eight years that I've been there. Uh -huh. So uh, they had about, I'm guessing about maybe an extra couple thousand people show up to normal. Wow. So uh, I forgot all about wearing green, didn't pinch nobody, didn't get pinched, and uh, hey, you know, life went on. But uh, let's get on. Yeah, is, is that mic? Oh, you got, he's got the mic? Yep. All right. Okay, so uh, turn my earphones up just a hair more, just a hair more there. Okay. All right. Now, let's go back to Sam. Now he's got a microphone. Let's hear about the rest of these movies. Hold on. Before you say anything, Sam, Jimmy, any any guesses of what else he saw? He saw three more. He saw the Muppets. Three saw the more. Muppets. Um, I'm going to guess one. How about Jill and Jack? No. I would never watch that piece of crap. How <laughs> many watches the Muppets? <laughs> the Muppets are awesome, dude. It's the Muppets. Movie. No, Sam has a real thing for the Muppets. I like, bet he does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do they call those guys that dress up and have uh, sex in those outfits? Oh, uh. Koozies or furries? Snuggies? Furries. Furries. furries yes. Yeah. Do you tell me, Brendan, you don't like the Muppets? You're un-American if you don't like the Muppets. I, I liked them when I was a kid. I don't kid. like the Muppets. Then you're un-American. I am. A, I call me un-American. I do not like the Muppets. They occasionally are by themselves or just one Muppet. And they're on, like, Conan or David Letterman. It's always kind of funny when they're on there. Um, but, no, I like that. Uh, who's that insult dog that used to be on? Triumph. Yeah, Triumph, that's the, the kind of stuff dog. I like. That's the kind of Muppet dog I like, man, right there. Yeah. Triumph, yeah. But, uh, no, nah, I mean, I like the Muppets one -on when they're one-on-one -on -one, uh, at some event making fun of stuff at late night. But, no, nah, I'm, really, I'm not really a Muppet fan, man. I'm kind of an adult. <laughs> <laughs> not, a pedo not a pedophile. That's nothing to do with being an adult and a kid. The Muppets, everyone loves the Muppet. Well, you well, too. Know, but that's one thing to love. What's wrong with both of you guys? No, I, I think that you'd find that there's quite a few people that uh, don't really care for the Muppets. No, you're wrong. Hold on. Let me say, I like them. When I was younger, and I appreciate them as an adult because they're part of my history and past, but that's about as far as I'm going to go with that. See, I, I, I uh, feel like I missed that part of it. So I do uh, admit that I'm a little bit out of touch because I was never a Muppets fan. I never watched kids programming. I never watched Sesame Street. <laughs> I went right to Doogie Howser. Wow. Like, that's what I started watching when I was, like, three. So now, were you a Doogie Howser or a Vinny fan? What was his name Vinny? Who was a little sidekick? Oh, I love Vinny. Yeah, yeah. Uh, was it Vinny? Uh, uh, the little Italian guy that was always trying to like uh, pick up on girls and stuff. On uh, Doogie Howser? Yeah. yeah. I never watched Doogie Howser. Yeah, okay. that guy was awesome, though, man. I loved him. Yeah, that chick on there, is she the one that oh. later wanted to be on Party of Five? 
I don't know, but Nate she was. Ke- she looks like Nate Campbell, didn't she? She was my first love, man. Like really? I'm talking about when I was like five or six. Her, I, I'm her gonna, or Doogie? Uh, her. Okay. The uh, the most embarrassing part was uh, like at one point, like I was so in love with her that like I couldn't get to sleep one night because I was like I was uh, just saddened that I was never gonna meet her. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right, let's hear the rest of this lineup there for uh, Mr. Sam because neither one of us guessed it apparently. Uh, Sam, the, what three, did you get? the new Three Musketeers movie, which was absolutely horrible, and I shut it off an hour into it. Okay. Um, the Green Lantern with Ryan Reynolds and okay. the superhero and uh, Blake Lively who is so hot in that movie. Now hold on, I get the green there's also the Green Hornet. Yeah, not I the see. Green Hornet, that's Seth Rogen. That was crap. The Green right. Lantern. So Ryan Reynolds got you to Oh Ryan that. Reynolds is hot, man. All right, okay. And Blake Lively, she's hot too. All right. Um and then I I'm halfway through Friends with Benefits with Mia Kunis and Justin Timberlake. Oh. Now so that was my Did favorite. you rent that for the Mia? Uh, Mila Kunis or the Justin Timberlake part of the thing? Oh, a little of both. They're both hot too. All right, okay. Yeah. I like a man. That, I like a man that can appreciate the Muppets and Justin Timberlake <laughs> in the same. In the same <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is a, a wide spectrum of uh, different likes over the weekend. Well, you have to realize I get these things for my website, redcarpetcrash.com dot com, and I put out little things on Twitter and Facebook, my opinions, and we review them for the site. So, you know, I'm just trying to uh, stay up to date. We give them away. Do you, do you get these mailed to you? Yeah. Or at least they send you a copy. Now, is it, it's, uh, it's a week after they come out, a week before they come uh, out? Muppets I got like two weeks before it came out, Three Musketeers. Yeah, I usually get like review copies early. Really? Now, the review copies, they have like the word sample across the screen? Some of them do. These were the actual ones that they sell in the stores. But sometimes they, they'll be they'll say courtesy of um, Universal Studios not to be resold, not to be... Um, the, share does it say that across the entire screen or just the bottom? Uh, usually just the bottom, and it'll pop up every like minute or two. Okay. Courtesy of you know, Universal Pictures. Interesting. All right. Cool. But the ones I got were just the regular DVDs that would be on sale in the stores. So at any given day in your mailbox, there could be the Muppets or Jenna Jameson does Chicago. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen his other uh, video collections he gives out. Yes. All right. Okay. Well, um, so that was your Saturday. Yes, sir. All right, what about Sunday? Oh, you were with us at the we're out BMX the, track. Yeah, out at the track, man. That All was right. some cool stuff out there, man. I'd never seen the bikes. That, that, that was pretty fun stuff. Now, did you get to watch the pro racing at all? The the, the older guys are really hot. I mean, you can tell I they're could, hauling bikes. Yeah, I was watching bits and pieces because there were so many people in front of me. It was hard to, to see, but I was walking around a little bit and checking it out. But, yeah, that's some fun stuff, you know, going the way they go around those curves so fast. Yeah. I actually made the mistake because I'm such an idiot. I was talking to the um, the EMTs. Uh-huh. And I was asking them, hey, you guys been busy all weekend, a lot of stuff. And they go, not too bad, just, you know, some shoulder, fingers, you know, people. And I'm like, right. I didn't know how many people raced in a, a race. And I was like, I looked at them, I go, oh, man, this would be cool. Just like NASCAR, I'd like to see all 10 of them wipe out at the same time. And I, somebody, the spectator there goes, there's only eight people that race at a time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The okay. maximum is eight. It's usually about, eh, on average, about probably six per race until the main event. At the main event, the entire gate will be full of eight people. Uh, but And it happens, man. You know what you're talking about. It, it definitely happens. Uh, I've seen where, probably I've seen where all eight of them. I've definitely seen where all eight flip the gate. But, uh, man, the, the thing that was getting to me, because I do have a heart, a lot of the littler kids, the younger yeah. kids, they're crying their eyes out when they finish the race because they came, they didn't win or they came in last. There was this one kid that was just crying. He must have been about seven, six or seven. Uh-huh. And I don't think he could find his parents for a while. And he's just walking around bawling his eyes out. And finally, his parents showed up and they're hugging him, telling him it's okay. But I just felt so bad for the little tyke. Those are the worst losses when you're a kid because you have everything riding on that race you know and then or that game or something you know so it really is detrimental you know when you lose at that age especially like around like third well you know anywhere between 10 and 15 when you lose that first you know few races they're the worst losses of all time it's never going to be worse than that like i'm pretty sure as an adult if you lose the super bowl it's not near as bad as when you lost the championship as uh, as a little kid, you know, I know that we actually ended up having one season where um, we ended up having a great team. We ended up going undefeated and unscored upon the entire season, and then with two minutes left in the Super Bowl game, we got scored on, and we won the championship with flying colors. But we got scored on, and I will never forget how heartbroken I was that day. I couldn't believe that that's when we were going to let that happen the first time. 
and like because of that it, it was it was the worst moment ever so yeah. i can imagine what those kids are going through and i must say it's like nascar out there everyone's sponsored the, oh the, yeah there's a what sunbrew shirts on everyone it seemed like yeah there's a we have a pretty big program actually it's much smaller than it used to be um and there's a couple mer- major mergers that happened with uh, us and All Star uh, program. Mergers, uh, not murders. Yeah, mergers. Yes, mergers. <laughs> we, um, yeah, it's it's it is like NASCAR, man. Maybe even more so sponsorship wise, because you know, not taking away from the sport by no means are the kids that are on the teams. But you know, when I raced as a kid, only a certain amount of people were actually on teams. It was a real big deal. It was hard to get on a team, and um, you know, most of the kids running around were not a part of a program, a team. Okay. Now there's so many teams out there. Okay. And you look over, and there's 20 kids over here on this team and 10 over here. And, um, you know, there's a lot more teams out there. So it's kind of taken away a little bit. But also I appreciate the fact that kids like to be on teams. And they feel like they're part of something. I, I don't I don't want a kid to not have that feeling, you know what I mean? So uh, I think Sam Willoughby even mentioned it, uh, in our interview, if you listen to it, that uh, there's just too many factory teams on. And that is the thing about this year, man. There are so many factory teams. Now, Sunbrew for many years was one of the top five factory teams in the USA BMX form. Now, what, what is a factory team? How does that factory. work? Uh, factory. There's three team. levels of competition. There's trophy, which is the guys that are, you know, not as serious about the uh, competition level of teams. Then there's, and, and there's, they still want to win by all means, but it's just a little different level of uh, competition, okay? Um, I guess it's kind of like saying uh, there's, well, anyway, the, the, the uh, budgets for those teams are probably far less, you know, maybe a fraction of the cost of uh, the factory teams. Then you have the bike shop program, which is kind of like the medium level competition. And then you have the factory team. Now, back in the uh, 70s and 80s, the word factory team was mainly ran by the people that make the bicycles, okay? So factory. Well, it then started turning over where people like McDonald's got involved and had a factory team. And, you know, just anyone that wants to put themselves in the factory category can do so if they want to spend the money and, um, you know, step up their game a little bit. So uh, Now, as McDonald's being your sponsor, they probably tell you to stay away from their restaurants, right? <laughs> you know, that's funny, but <laughs> probably not. I got to think that they're going to find something there that's going to be healthy and good for you. <laughs> and uh, I would think they're not saying to stay away from the restaurant. But I Here comes Chris, Team McDonald's going, oh, whoa, Chris. <laughs> Tough break. <laughs> uh, the, um, the team here that was McDonald's actually were based out of Texas, man. I remember when you'd walk into McDonald's, you saw a, a, a team picture of all the BMXers. It was a really cool deal, man. It was kind of neat. But, uh, <laughs> but those guys, um, uh, you know, the factory programs changed a lot, man. It, got, it became more mainstream, like Eagle Snacks had a team. And, and I started seeing a little bit of a mixture there. Um, now most of the factory teams, it does consist of a lot of the bike manufacturers and stuff, but there's also people like Sunbrew. Now Sunbrew is involved with a lot of our co-sponsors that like us, uh, S-squared frames. Uh, they make our parts. We have uh, signs making our forks. Uh, you know, so they're all BMX-related companies. But you know, you also see a lot of energy drinks out there that are you know part of the program. So uh, it's it's different, man. It's, it is like NASCAR in a sense that everyone's got a logo. But I will tell you my problem though with some of these sponsorships. I don't like it when kids aren't aware of who they're sponsored by. Mm-hmm. You'd be surprised how many people have on these shirts and can't tell you whose logo represents what. Yeah. And I, I've done it, man. Every once in a while, I test these kids out. Not, not my own team. It, actually, actually, my own team as well. But I'll ask them like, "What's that?" They don't know. I'm like, "Man, dude, I, you know, as a sponsor, I wouldn't be real happy about that." Yeah, well, you know, that's what happens uh, in late Pee Wee football, too, man. I remember we had uh, this, wow, I forget what it was called, but it was something like uh, Greg's Food Grains or something like that. And he was just, you know, probably gave us like 200 bucks for the team or whatever. I had no idea what Greg was up to. Like, there was no I don't think anybody on the team knew, but, like, uh, it's the ones that do. And you can tell the difference. I mean, like, we talked to a couple of them that really understood their sponsors and, like, knew how to, like, kind of – convey the message of their sponsors and those are the ones that end up doing really really well well you got to take care of your sponsor and i'll tell you something if you take care of your sponsors right guess who notices you the other sponsors yeah (laughs) uh we actually got a very big um a very big sponsorship one time for sunbrew as a whole because we were out there promoting a sponsor called yum shoes and by the end of the weekend this guy's like man everywhere i looked there was yums yums i'd never heard of it before i definitely know it now i'll never forget it and uh yellowtail wine came calling Mm-hmm. And that was a pretty big deal for the company, man. When Yellowtail Wine stepped up, man, we were uh, traveling a lot and getting nice paychecks from them and uh, doing our best to promote, f- not through the BMX world, but through the other world of Sunbrew, uh, the Yellowtail Wine program. So mm-hmm. that is the thing. And these kids need to learn a little bit more about who they're sponsored by. You know, even if it's 
if a, if a logo's on a jersey, it's your job to know what it represents and what's what's backing you. Yeah, that's my feelings on it. But uh, what did y'all think? Though, I mean, did you watch Sam Willoughby race? We talked, we interviewed him and Donnie. Did you see his actual race? Mm-hmm. Sam, did you see? Did you do you remember Sam that we interviewed? Yeah. Did you see him actually winning? No, I didn't. But I saw the uh, who was the the cute twenty one year old girl that we that you interviewed. I saw her. Uh, Elise. Yeah, I saw her. Saw her race. That was an exciting race, man. Isn't mm-hmm. it not amazing how they get, the momentum they get these? They don't have to pedal, and they will continually go faster and faster. Is that not? Is just as cool i mean it's, it's so weird to watch that and see how fast these guys go and how they hit a jump go 30 feet flying across the air and somehow they land it right on the right spot of that jump right that's just total body control i mean it's it's just amazing to watch these guys i mean i raced as a kid and cannot even you know as an adult i've got out there a few times and it just blows me away how much control they have of these bikes yeah it takes a crazy amount of technique and you have to appreciate that the second you actually see that first race where someone does do that flies up one of the ramps goes directly over the next ramp and then down on the third well let's let's, let's not say ramps because there's no ramps out there well yeah yeah this is uh, freestyle but there's dirt, 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 dirt there's still jumps. jumps there you go okay but uh it is and w- wait till we get out there now sam are you going to join me and uh, jimmy out there and we do our race i don't know if I'll, i've never been on those tracks i'd like to just ride it once and at least just Okay. Do it, but I don't know about racing because I'll probably kill myself. Yeah, i got to get a ride through before we no, start racing. No, of course we will. We'll, yeah. we'll actually go out there and we'll just kind of let the ga- just go down the gate, let it drop, mm-hmm. slowly roll over all things. Get, just get the feel of how, you know, going up the hill, going down the yeah, hill. Because I was watching them in practice Friday and I was going, boy, they're not, this is kind of boring because they're just riding it, but then they were just. To just going through the course. Because yes. come Sunday, it was a completely different atmosphere. W- totally. And what you'll notice, like on the Friday during practices, they might come out of the gate strong, slow down, hit the next straight strong, slow down. They're just working on certain sections of the track. They're not going to go out there and exhaust themselves on every single lap, you know? Right. Uh, they're saving it for the real race. But you work on certain parts of the track, and there you go. Now, most of these guys can just, the uh, the experts, the uh, more uh, experienced riders, they'll just show up anywhere in the U.S. on a weekend, on a Friday, Get out there, and they'll go one lap around that track, and they have it dialed in. That's what's amazing, man. Mm-hmm. So I got to tell you, those jumps are scary, aren't they? Some of the bigger ones. Yeah, I I, I can only imagine. I, you know, going over them must be a completely different thing. But you know, at the same time, anyone who's into like uh, riding bikes, your first like your first instinct is I got to try this thing out. You know, like even if I know I'm not going to be able to do this at like near the speed, probably ten ten minutes later, I'll be finishing from some of these guys, but. You know, it does seem like it'd be a lot of fun to at least get through it. Will you, will you be crying, Jimmy, if you lose? I will be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you lose to Brandon? Yes, yeah, as, as I crawl through 10 minutes later. I tell you now, if I lose to either one of y'all, I'd be crying. I'd be bawling. <laughs> I mean, cause that should never happen. Like, I have a background experience in the sport. I haven't yeah. been on a track in years upon years, and I haven't rode a bike, quite honestly, a BMX bike where I really rode one for, another, you know, five years probably mm-hmm. um which is odd that i have like this national factory program that travels and we have all these uh, you know we probably have about uh, right now we have like about 60 athletes that race bmx bicycles my team has 60 at one point we had like over 100 and 150 mm-hmm. because we had various teams throughout the u.s we actually uh had like a florida sunbrew team wichita falls uh kansas we had all sorts of sun oklahoma we uh, we were kind of a we were kind of a, like a subway of BMX racing for a while, yeah. man. You know, we had locations all over the place. And it was really cool to show up, and uh, some kid, you know, you you look over and there's some kid walking by with your logo, and he walks over and talks to you, and you don't know who he is, you know. But it's kind of neat to see their the awe of meeting like your factory team. These, you know, and that they're part of that, you know. Mm-hmm. These little kids like uh, we met that you saw, um, they're superstars. Uh, you know, they're in the magazines. They're known at the nationals, and when they show up to um, a, d- a new a new town, and the locals there, they really just roll out the red carpet, man. They thought they just saw a major star, you know. And this kid might be 12 years old or 14 years old, man. And uh, it's really neat to watch, man. I mean, that's a feeling that I uh, I remember having as a kid when I met my heroes, and uh, it's a neat feeling that we're able to be part of that now, you know. Mm-hmm. But um. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yes, you're laughing. What's, what you, what's going on here? Uh, I'm just thinking you're talking about these kids that, you know, they could possibly go into the, the Olympics, you yeah. know, and like this is like, you know, around that age. Do you remember Oksana Bayul? Yes, I do. Oh, that was the next girl that like I had a huge crush on. And I was just kind of likening to her. Like, you know, I would imagine that they rolled out the red carpet for her when she was, you know, go, you know. What about Oksana Sunbrew? That. You got a little crush on her too? Uh, well, especially after she's in a dubstep. How can I not? Of course, just a fad. So your crush will go away eventually. Uh, 
<laughs> Why do you say it like that? You started like kind of smirking when you asked. Ah, it's a fad. You know what I mean? I'm what do you mean? You're, 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 no, like, when you ask him about Oksana. Oh, I was just curious. So I'd like to see you act like <laughs> Oksana by, by you. What about the local Oksana? You might have a little okay. thing there too. Yeah. She was quite the hit out there, wasn't she? She was. Did you find it uh, odd that she was signing more autographs than the uh, pros? <laughs> 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 and they were paying her for her autograph? Well, I think that they could have had like a row full of pros right behind her, and no one would have noticed the pros. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, some of the people, obviously the kids would have, the little ones. But, man, they, she's quite – I mean, here's what's really funny about these Sunbury girls. They, at one time, were just as well known as many of the uh, athletes out there because they'll go to, like, the biggest race of the year, Grands, and they'll be seen by everybody. They take pictures, and uh, they have quite the following. I mean, they'll, people get on the message boards and talk. In fact, I'd go ahead and say that um, – there are some pro athletes in BMX, not the top pros, but that uh, some of the girls have been better known than some of the pro BMX athletes at certain points. I'm talking about the pros that are not doing as well, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? But uh, it's a neat thing, man. I, I enjoy having the girls out there. I think they do a lot of good for the sport. They bring awareness. They add a little something extra in the pit, something to talk about. Um, you know, they're out there helping the team out, which is awesome. Dude, I had to, I got to tell you something, man. I, I did some volunteer for our program this weekend, and I've never done that before. Um I uh, turned down a trip to Daytona Beach, Florida for Bike Week. Canceled that to stay in town for this event. And I was working the parking lot duties at the track at 6 a.m. in the morning, man. Wow. Um, Yeah. That's early. That's real early. (laughs) Which means I had to get up at like 4.30 to get there on time. You understand that, right? Shower, get up there, drive. Uh, Sure. That's rough, bro. Yeah. But, you know, I lived through it. It wasn't that bad. I was, like, shocked. I was getting four hours Thursday night. Let's see. Thursday night, Friday night, and Saturday night, I had four hours of sleep per night. I know how you feel, man. I used to do it for two years. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's, 4.30 it's, it's every morning. The most torturous thing in the world, knowing it you is. have to get up that early, dude. I feel for you. Anyone well, does when that, you're getting up and it's so dark out, yes. you walk out and it's more quiet than it's probably ever been. You go to your car. There's nobody on the road. <laughs> like yeah. it's just you, and you're wondering why am I up so early? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> totally. I, I I went over to Frito Lay. I had a few of those. Moments. I was like, what in the world am I doing? Why is this? This is so unnatural. God did not intend yeah. us to be up before the sunlight is supposed to wake us up. That's what it's there for. The sun says, wake up. If you're up before the sun, it's just not natural. Yeah. But and you know it's bad when you go into the gas station. The gas uh, station attendant is going, so is this good morning or good evening? Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, uh, I don't want to talk right now. It's early. Yeah. I, I'll tell you, Oksana, she stays at the Sunbrew house when she's in town. And, man, she's one that sleeps like 5 in the, in the afternoon. Like her breakfast will begin around 4.30 to 5.30 today. And that to me is so odd, so different. But uh, but yeah, I was out there working the park lot, man, uh, doing my time. I was like, man, this is really not that hard to do. It was actually kind of, I felt good about, like I was doing something positive. The problem I had was that I noticed, come Saturday when we did the broadcast, dude, I'm not on all, I mean, I was having a, t- a tough time just um, saying the right words, man. I was tired, man. Yeah. Doing this job, what we're doing right now, if you're not on your A game, like if you're tired and a little worn out and you get a little bit lost on your thoughts, man. Well, it's hard to arrange them all in a way that's like actually legible for the people that are tuning in. Well, yeah, but, you know, you do realize when we did our broadcast on Sunday, man, that was like the end of the weekend for me. I've been up all morning, every day, working, and here's the end of it. We got to do our broadcast at the very end. I mean, had we done that broadcast at 10 a.m., it had been a lot easier for me, a lot better and smoother than we mm. did it when we, whenever we did do it, which what, 3 o'clock or 2 o'clock, whatever it was. Which was basically a full day after you had woken up. Yeah, dude. Oh, it was so torturous, man. It was so bad. <laughs> but, uh, but it was fun, man. I'm, I'm glad you guys got to go out there and check it out, man. I think the sport is really awesome. And they have awesome turkey hogs. Yeah, now that's a good friend of mine, Larry, man. His kid used to be on our team. Um, he's a, Y'all may not know so He's a kid that won one of the days, the 13 expert class, and then he wrecked going into the main, uh, kind of an upset. But Larry Munson, he actually r- uh, runs some of the concessions at the State Fair of Texas. So you might recognize some of those legs whenever you go out there. Uh, He's a good guy, man, good guy. The sport's really a family sport, but I will tell you something happened this weekend. I think we brought out a different side of the sport. We got to know these pros a little more personal, and we didn't ask them just strictly BMX questions. Mm -hmm. We found out things about them that I honestly, I just feel like after I got to know Elise and uh, Sam a little bit better, uh, it's like, I don't know, I'm more of a fan now, you know what I mean? Right. It's like some of these people, you think they're just robots. They train, they sit in the pit, they're focused, and they have no life. And it kind of makes them somewhat, um, I don't know, almost nerdy. 
Yeah, well, it, it can happen with sponsorships sometimes. You know, there's a, a very weird line that you have to tote where you have to still be a personable person and represent brands. Yes. And it's really, really hard to do. Some people do it better than others. And uh, some people don't get a chance to actually show the other more personal side of themselves. So when you start talking about it, it's much easier for them to actually be like, yeah, I have a boyfriend, I have a social life, I do other things. Well, it's funny. Both of those people, Elise and Sam, Sam especially, he's, he won both days. You know, mm-hmm. he cheated a major amount of money. You said check. You got twenty one hundred bucks. Oh, really? The, on Sunday, I saw his check. Kind of, sw- some little kid was walking by his check. The big oversized. Some little one. kid jacked him. Yeah, they jacked his <laughs> check. Uh, twenty one hundred bucks. So, so that means he probably won the same amount the day before. He had a good weekend. Plus, he gets paid by his sponsors, and he has. Con- if you win, you get contingency money. Like for instance, by him getting first place, he got bonus money. Mm-hmm. So I don't know what he made, but maybe he might have made seven grand this weekend. For that, for that, not, a bad not thing to mention for, his, yeah. not to mention his monthly salary he gets from his sponsors. Okay, mm-hmm. and his girlfriend probably made half of that. But uh, you know, they had a good weekend for the little household, didn't they? They did. Did you notice the third guy, Jason Carnes, the the shaved head, bald head guy? Mm-hmm. Um, did you notice he felt a little uncomfortable on some of the topics? We like, I was kind of pushing him a little bit. And uh, there were some cringes in his face a little bit about some of the stuff like we talked about him wearing speedos and, and yeah. stuff like that. There were some topics that I, you know, I know he was a little bit. He said he wasn't, but it's, I saw him cringe a little bit like, oh, no, let's don't go there, man. Well, I got the feeling that you knew him to a level that he wasn't comfortable with you knowing him and doing a radio show. Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, Carnes is from Texas, man. He yeah. he grew up with a guy called the Sweat Hogs, a, ga- a team. They were called this, and they were the most notorious crazy team and being, they would lock people in portable to- toilets they would put duct tape around it and lock people in parents they would uh, ride their bicycles often uh, clothes you know without clothes on mm-hmm. they would you know they would dress up in uh, bums outfits and you know stay on the street corners and videotape themselves making you know have, they were crazy man. they were good, a good bunch of guys uh, funny guys harmless stuff they did I mean I'm sure the person got out of the portable toilet eventually um <laughs> But that's the kind of guy that were. Now he's running, you know, helping run this red line squad. But I just seemed like a little bit. He was a little bit worried there, a little bit. Like, oh, where we? Where, what are we going to talk about next? You know? Yeah. But I think that's the great part of it. He's he's such a character, man. That's what he makes him carnage. You know, that's what makes him who he is. Well, it definitely seems like it from some of those stories. I mean, I can understand why he would have been uh, a little bit embarrassed to uh, talk about the fact that you know. You well, it's funny because like, his another guy on that same team, man, uh, was Denzel Stein. He rides for me and uh. You know, when this kid was 14 years old, I, t- I took him all across the country uh, racing bicycles, and um, he had his first big year that year. I mean, he became the NAG one, which stands for National Age Group Number One Ranking. And uh, I remember that kid setting the uh, field on fire. We were uh, we decided we'd have a little. You ever had bottle rocket wars mm-hmm. or Roman candle fights? Yeah. Well, we thought every Fourth of July. I thought we'd celebrate the team. We did pretty good in Tennessee. We were bored. I went and bought it was uh, July Fourth weekend, so we went and bought all these. Uh, Fireworks, and we decided to go next to the side of the highway. This little a, a lot, and we start battling each other. I, I, the stupidest thing I've ever done, probably, because uh, one of those things blew up right behind my head. It hit my hit my scalp and bounced off and blew up behind me. Uh, I hit a kid, and here I'm a grown man. I'm shooting kids with bottle rockets. <laughs> uh, I burnt a hole in one of my uh, riders' jerseys, and then lo and behold, Denzel Stein, factory redline rider, he was there. He's actually out there this weekend. Uh, he shoots some Roman candles, and all of a sudden, a blaze happens. A blaze, Jimmy. Uh, luckily, one of my athletes ran out there and jumped in the middle of all this fire. Would not recommend that. Wow! And started stomping it out. We were all out there stomping it, but the it was the uh, flames were like four feet tall mm-hmm. by the time we got out there. It was about you know eighty yards away from us. We ran over there, but yeah, we set a uh, field on fire for half a second there. And uh, the funniest thing is that Denzel, who started the fire, we looked up. We're out there pouncing and bouncing on the grass and he's still back there shooting off rockets not even paying attention to what we're doing or helping out just having the time of his life over there yeah he's in his <laughs> own little world but that, that's what it was about well listen man let's talk about what we're doing today we are located right here at dallas furniture located at 635 and midway right behind the in and out burger now if you're one of our listeners and you hear some podcast down the road uh you should know it's uh let's say today's date what is today's date what is today's date? Is it the Today's the 20th, first May, day of spring. Oh, okay. March tw- is it really behind? first day? March 20th. <laughs> so, even if you hear this podcast in uh, a week or two weeks from now, uh, I'm sure they still have their grand opening sales going on, but it's right behind or kind of sideways to In-N-Out Burger by the front door. Uh, they've got all sorts of layaway plans happening, sales specials. They've got catalogs. If you walk in and see something you like, but you might want to try something different to add to it, let them pull up a catalog. They'll order it for you. They'll get it over there. They offer delivery. 
Uh, they're open, I believe, seven days a week. And uh, they're open, I know, 12 to 7 on Monday through Saturday. Uh, you'll have to call them and check out their hours for uh, Sundays. Uh, we should also give out their phone number, but I don't have the thing in front of me. Is your number the same still? Let's get the number. They changed locations. They were they actually moved just across the uh, across the parking lot. Yeah, so not too hard to uh, find. You can see the Dallas Furniture uh, sign right out front. So what's, what's kind of cool is if you pull out of the uh, pull into the driveway or out of, if you're leaving this parking lot, you can't help but run into the store. As odd as this sounds, even though that location is about. 30 yards across the lot. Mm-hmm. I got to think this location might actually be better because when you pull through the drive through in and out, which everyone goes to in and out Burger, that right. place is always packed. You roll right up to their front door. Yeah, you literally do. You go the, right by their front door. They should offer, bring us in your uh, in and out Burger receipt and get free water or something. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they could do something like that, though. Are in and out patrons uh, into water? <laughs> I, I, you know, if you're being cheap, they might be. Mm-hmm. I don't know. But, uh, not a bad idea, actually. They should serve. They should serve drinks right here. Yeah. You know, drive through, walk to the showroom. Hell. Well, half know. the time here at In and Out, like, cause it's In and Out. What came in about like a year ago into the Dallas Fort Worth area? Oh yeah, yeah, it did about a year ago. Correct. Yeah. So like, uh, you know, it's if you aren't aware of like the way it's worked out in Dallas, it's literally just drive through line after drive through line. If you see them, how many? How many are there now? In and outs, like four? No, there's more than four. I've four? I know there's one in Allen. There's uh-huh. one here. There's actually another one right down the road here. There's two right here. Wow. There's one at Coit and one here. There's one in Allen. It's three. There's one off seventy five. That's four. And I I know there's more. It's I out mean. of control, man. And uh, what's really cool about In and Out, man, is how nice they build them. They look really. I live in Las Vegas, and that's the same kind of look like in Vegas. That uh, yeah. The uh, top of those roofs, those uh, stucco. I guess that's what you call that. Uh, I don't know. But it's got that you know whole um. I don't know what you call that, man. But it's got the stucco look going. Wide, but really nice. The palm trees. They have that California Las Vegas look. Right. And uh, it's a pretty simple menu, man. doesn't take very very long to figure out what you want to order. That's why, yeah. That, I think that that's why they're really good about what they do. Keep it simple. Yeah. I, I, I got to tell you, man. When you drive by this shopping center now that they're here, because I live actually in this area, um, you can't help but notice it, man. It brings a lot of light, which is probably good for Dallas Furniture right here, man, because I mean, that building is lit up. You can see it from the highway, and uh, you pull in here. This whole shop is going to be so dead. And now because of one little burger place called In-N-Out Burger, this is like a Hatman Center all of a sudden. Brought it right back to life. It's like they almost should give them almost like free uh, rent or free space. Yeah, free, please free move draw. in. Yeah, because all these spots where we're at were empty not too long ago. Yeah. You know, not all, but most of them are empty. And now they're filling in yeah. because of an In-N-Out Burger. And think about this. I'm not it, sure what that says about, you know, the American public. <laughs> that that's what it takes to uh, drive in traffic, but you know, that's what happened. Well, if you ever do you remember whenever do you remember giving out directions when you uh, at some point you're like, or even today where you're like, look for the blockbuster. It's like one block from the block. You always use those landmarks. Right. I've noticed that I use this in and out burger as my landmark now for mm-hmm. telling people how to get to my area. Like you'll see the in and out burger. Go about a mile up the road and it's to the right. You know, you always use the In-N-Out Burger now as your landmarks. Mm-hmm. Uh, sometimes it's Walmart. But um, do you have a landmark? Do you, I mean, have you ever noticed that about yourself? You always use landmarks and it's always it used to be blockbusters. Yeah. Well, that's why I don't like being in the country because if you're in the country, there's very few distinctive things that you can be like, hey, that point, take a right. It's usually like, hey, you're going to see a lot of grass on your right for about eight miles. At some point, you're going to see a guy who's barely making his way down the road. Hopefully, he's still there. That's old Gregor. Take it right there. Wave to him. You know, me. he likes, he's lonely. Uh, just the, the country areas are very hard to give directions around. Oh, they are. I used to go to the BMX track when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. It was in, like, Combine, Texas, in the middle of the sticks, bro. That's rough, man, especially at nighttime, okay? And uh, I'll never forget how to go there. And it's like, how do you give directions in the middle of the country? Uh, I mean, it's rough. It's so tough to do, but you know it's we're now a GPS. Mm-hmm. Um, pretty easy. Hey, can we put a um, video up from my phone onto the uh, your computer? Um, yeah, if you email it to me. The reason I'm asking is I have a footage of me in the country one time where I got lost. Uh, we need to talk about this later. Can we, uh, when we come back from break. Let's show this, okay? I want to okay. talk about GPS and how spoiled we are today and uh, all that kind of stuff. You know, I mean, we'll go over. Uh, we'll have a little segment about that. But let's do this, man. Let's get into. Uh, Let's get to the news, man. What's going on in the news there, uh, Sam Lama? What's going on in the news? Peyton Manning signed a big contract. Yep, Peyton's going to die. With the Denver Broncos. 
Oh, wow. Five years. I'm a Raiders fan. They're in our division. Million. Now, hold on. Manny, I don't follow football that well, but he's the guy that just left the coach, right? Yeah. That cried to give the inspirational interview that we all felt touched by. Mm-hmm. And he went from one uh, horse team to another one. Yep. He left the Colts to go to the Broncos. Broncos sound like a bigger, better deal than gonna, a Colt. Going to go ahead and put that horse down this year. So Yeah, he might turn that into glue if you don't watch out, man. So basically he gave up his legacy, the lifelong, I was forever a Colt, and sold in for a Bronco. Broncos are a good team. Like That's a good organization to work for if you're a quarterback, though. That's a quarterback team. So, you know. I think it's actually probably a good move for him, especially considering the Titans were trying to give him like a lifelong thing, even after football. Really? So, yeah. He must have really been How uh, much excited money about that. $96 million over five years. Oh, my goodness. Okay, it makes sense now. Yeah. <laughs> Screw the Colts. And now the, uh, <laughs> the Broncos say they're probably going to try and trade Tim Tebow. To the church. <laughs> <laughs> Just leave him there. <laughs> wow. Somebody will take him. The, the running bet right now is maybe the um, Jaguars because he's the uh, owner of the Jaguars. Oh, I would love to see him go to the Jaguars. Because he was a Tebow fan and he was always uh, crazy Tebow. Oh, good. <laughs> Why do you want him to go to the Jaguars? Because that organization, since 1996, they had the two exhibition teams come in, the uh, the Titans and the Jaguars. And uh, ever since then, they've just been a horrible team. Like, just nothing has ever come from it. And if Tebow goes there, he'll just make sure that that keeps on going. So good for them. They're sticking with what they know, losing. So good. Well, I think it's a risk. That I think they should keep Tebow for a while just to see how Manning plays in preseason and stuff. Cause, I mean, it's good for if you're a Raiders fan because if Manning comes in, he gets hurt at the beginning mm-hmm. of the season, they get rid of Tebow. Who's their backup quarterback? I know. That's the part that I'm actually most excited about, finish up that neck job. So <laughs> get that taken <laughs> care of. And, oh, uh, you know, I bet you the first time they play the Raiders, you're going to be rooting for the Raiders to do it, aren't you? Oh, are you kidding me? I want us to go at them first. I we get two shots at Peyton Manning this year, uh, and we're picking up new cornerbacks, so he's going to be back in the uh, in the pocket for a lot longer this year than he was last. This uh, you know, this is going to turn out pretty nice. I think we got a nice big front line, so uh, we'll see. I wonder when they fir- wouldn't it be good if they met in the first game. They usually meet in the first game of the season on Monday Night Football. Yeah, I'm hoping. Oh. That's a great scenario. Monday Night Football, the second game on ESPN. First player of the game. Oh. Oh, how awesome would that be? Excuse me. I need some personal time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. So enough about the football. How, before we move on, though, how much money did he make in the past per year for playing football for the he Colts? He was making a lot with the Colts, too. He was, I think he had um, close to like a $100 million contract, but the thing was is they had to release him when they did or it would roll over. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. So I think he, he was a pretty rich quarterback. He was and, up to uh, Brady money. Um, endorsement deals yeah. are probably crazy, too. At what point do you go, okay, I've had a – you know, have you ever had an experience where, like, that's just enough money? I made enough. Have you ever had a point in your life where you're making money at some point? You're like, that's enough. Let's just take a break for a little bit. I'm going to stop it there. Yeah, I mean, I'm very simple, though, so it doesn't take too much for me to get there. So um, if, you, if you went to work today and you're like, okay, let's just work all day and, like, halfway through the day – you didn't have to work all day, but mm-hmm. halfway through the day you made 150 bucks. And you know, if you continue working on for the rest of the day, you'll make another 150. Right. Would you stop or continue on? Uh, it just depends on the circumstances, you know. But yeah, I'm definitely one of those guys that'll take that into account and be like, hey, you know what? I could have the rest of this day to go out and go do something. So um, yeah, I, I totally understand, you know, uh, like why some people would think that. But the problem is, is that Peyton Manning, it's not his decision anymore. He's got so many people that are dependent on him making a lot of money off of his next co- contract that it's really not up to him. He just wants to play football for a good organization. So that's the part that he's probably trying to get worked out. And then his agent, managers, everybody who's working on endorsement deals, they're probably the ones that are going, hey, you can probably get this and this percentage. And It doesn't hurt that John Elway is like the general manager, big big shot at the Broncos too. Yeah. Because if it was somebody else that Peyton didn't really know, but when you know when you have John Elway, you're getting a little respect there and you know that he's – a man, a man's man. And John Elway also came from the Colts. A lot of people don't realize oh, that. Did he? Yep, oh. he originally was on the Colts and ended up going to the Broncos for uh, where his career kind of. I didn't know that. Got big. So. Wow. All right. What else is going on in the news, here, um, Sam? Do you watch Two and a Half Men, Brandon? Yes, I do. Charlie Harper's coming back. Who's Charlie Harper? The one that they killed off this season. Oh, Charlie Sheen. But it's not Charlie Sheen. 
They're bringing back an, his character. Yeah, his character's coming back after Alan has a, suffers a minor heart attack. Charlie's ghost, played by Kathy Bates, pays him a visit to his hospital bedside. So they're bringing the character of Charlie back in a, as a ghost, played by uh, Kathy Bates. Okay. Now, can, uh, did you watch it last night? Yep. All right. We'll talk about that later. We'll talk about, we'll talk about shows, yeah. what we saw. But we'll get because the, there's some inter- You know what I'm talking about probably, too, at the end I want to discuss. We'll talk about it later. Cliffhanger there for it. our listeners out there. Uh, yeah, yeah. Did you watch uh, Dancing with the Stars? No, I didn't watch. It. I had a busy weekend, man. I slept the part of it, and well, it was the best premiere Dancing with the Stars and fourteen cast. It was an awesome <sighs> Are show. Are you Everyone kidding me? Who was on the show? Uh, who was on the show? That's a not a lot of named stars. Yeah, Sherry Shepard from The View, uh, Martina Navratilova, a former tennis player. Yeah, okay. some hot uh, like opera singer. I forget her name, but she's really smoking hot. Okay, um, Urko. Jamal, Steve? Jamal White. Yeah. He killed. He got the highest score last night. Wow. He's actually, he, you know, plays he, a cool guy on some other shows. Yeah, that's what I was going to say is that, like, that was a total, that was one of the things that, like, really messed with me when, when I was younger is that Urkel wasn't really nerdy. He was cool. Like, how how did that happen? Like, I, did you notice that? Like, right after Urkel, like, he would go out and do interviews and, like, he would be totally cool. Because he was playing a part, Jimmy, on that show? I know, <laughs> but most people, like, <laughs> even, like, Tom Cruise, for instance, like, a lot of people give him props for being a great actor. He can't be that nerdy. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think that even, like, somebody who is well-gifted is him. So, I, I'm just saying that Urkel should have had a lot longer of a, uh, of a career than uh, waiting this long to finally get hooked up with Dancing with the Stars. Like, it's kind of impressive. I've, I've tried to get her attention like three different times. <laughs> Can you give me a business card? Uh, or just write down the phone number and stuff, information on a piece of paper. Right, I threw something <laughs> at you, by the way. Through the <laughs> I thought you were getting mad and just throwing no, things was, at random I've been, trying to, I've been doing this here. <laughs> and, and <laughs> I was like, all right. I'm going to I'm gonna try to throw something now. So like, um We'll we'll get her over here in a little bit. Get her on the uh, show, um, but anyway, uh, all right. So uh, what else is happening, man? Uh, well, a big story today is uh, a lot of people are up in arms with Michael Bay. Yes. Uh, are you a fan of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movies, there, Brandon? No. Okay. Now, finally, there's a movie that I want to go see the very first day. I will be that nerd that camps out in front of the movie theaters to go see this. What is it? You never saw it, Brandon. And then no, Brandon it gets never screwed saw the up. Movies. I saw a movie. I just the original movie. Teenage Mutant... Well, not the original, but back in the early Do you 90s. know the story of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? No, Vanilla Ice was in it. He did the song, Go Turtles, but, Go Turtle Go. But you don't know the original story of how they became no. mutant turtles? No. You don't know about I the, uh, guess the something, ooze? Something went, uh, yeah, something spilled into the, the right. sewers of the uh, city, and they became ninja... Yeah. Yeah, so they became mutant turtles. Mutant, right? Yeah. Because of the ooze. Okay. Michael Bay doesn't think that that's a good enough story for this movie. Well, what what's happening is they made a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles animated movie a few years back. People were up in arms saying it wasn't that good. It was all CGI'd. And so people were upset. It was so a cartoon, essentially. Yeah, the cartoon, yeah. basically. So now they, they decided they're going to reboot the franchise after years of negotiating and getting the rights back. There was some legal problems. Um, Warner Brothers, I believe, is rebooting it, and Michael Bay is going to direct it and produce it and all that good stuff. Uh-huh. Well, word leaked out yesterday from this, supposedly from the script, that he's going to reboot it and he's going to make the turtles aliens. Oh, and this geez. has got a lot of people upset because Michael Bay is known for over. The, he does all the Transformers movies, over the top, big, shoot 'em up, bang 'em, you know, fights, explosions. So when word leaked out about this yesterday, the Turtle Ninja Turtle fans were all in an uproar. So Michael Bay had this to say: Oh, even one of the original Turtles, Robbie Rist, who is the voice of, um, who's the voice of one of them? Which one was he? Uh, Michelangelo. Yeah, he voiced Michelangelo. Look at are that. They are they going to use the original voice actors? Probably not. Oh, okay. Will Vanilla Ice be part of it? I doubt it. <laughs> Michael Bay put out a statement saying fans need to take a breath and chill. They have not read this script. Our team is working closely with one of the original creators of Ninja Turtles mm. to help expand and give a more compl- complex backstory. Mm-mm. Relax. We are including everything that made you become fans in the first place. We are just building a richer world. No. No, Michael Bay. Please stand in line and take shots at Michael Bay's face with your fist. That's what I would like to see next. Because we need a new 
We need a new script. We need somebody who knows what the hell is going on. It's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, not Teenage Alien Ninja Turtles. It's you. You don't need to mess with the story, Michael Bay. I don't even know this guy. I don't know what he's involved with. I just know that people hate him, and now he's messing with me. Now whoa, he's whoa, messing with whoa, me. Whoa, Jimmy. Yeah, no. This is this is. I have been waiting for this since the early '90s. A reboot of the live-action Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and this P.O.S. is going to ruin it for me. Twenty years later, he's going to ruin it for me. Thanks a lot, Michael Bay. Well, as a tur- turtle owner, I could care less. Just saying. You should care because you know what? If you dropped a ooze in your little turtle thing and they <laughs> came out and they started wanting pizza all the time and all of a sudden Michael Bay comes knocking at your door and he says, no, they're aliens, bro. And you're like, no, actually, I remember when I dropped the ooze in there. He's like, no, aliens. Takes your turtles away from you. You're going to be pretty upset. Yeah. No, I, I hear you, man. I just <laughs> kick, I don't care about this show. I, don't, I never saw it as a kid, so why don't I want to see it as an adult, man? Oh, uh, yeah. You really need to. Yeah, it's, it's good. A, do you have HBO? It's on HBO all the time, the original one. from. You really should watch the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. You really should. It's kind of dark, which is why it's kind of cool. Then there's you know? number two, Secret of the Ooze, and then there's the third one where they travel back. To we don't talk about number three. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> all right, man. Moving on to the news. What else is going uh, on? i got two other stories. you want to talk about Amelia Earhart? Or do you want to talk about the story from the other day that I say scorned male fruit flies turned to booze? Mm. The scorned fruit flies. I know Jimmy wanted to hold on to this one until oh. we could uh, talk about it in a more appropriate. Oh, for today, not for I like the fruit flies. But Amelia Earhart, what's she doing? Um, well, Hillary she's Clinton's not doing much. She's dead. <laughs> Basically, what happened was um, there was a photo uncovered in 2010. The researchers say may show the wheel of her plane in the water off the South Pacific Island. So now Hillary Clinton and Discovery Channel are going to investigate and see if they can find any more of the wreckage and the footage <laughs> and find out uh, what <laughs> what might have actually happened to her. Hillary Clinton's helping? Yes. What? The State De- <laughs> Hillary Clinton announced Tuesday the State Department support of a new search to solve the mystery of Amelia Earhart. <laughs> Do you know the story of Amelia Earhart, right, Brendan? Uh, you know, uh, not really. Uh, Unless she tried to sell, she be the first to, chick. To, yeah, she yeah. tried to sail by herself 75 years ago in her plane went down in the South Pacific. <laughs> nothing was ever recovered. No bodies, no footage, no wreckage stuff, nothing. So, so Hillary's going did. scuba diving. Yes. <laughs> uh, Discovery Channel is also supporting the privately funded uh, half million dollar research for it to see if they can figure out once and for all what happened to her plane and see if they can somehow come up with uh, answers. See, I can see why they would do it because they make a cool show about it. They'll find wreckage. Like, I watched Discovery Channel for some wreckage the other day. It was really cool where these guys found um, some kind of ship that wrecked and they were just deciding who has the gold, who has the rights to the gold, the, the country where the ship came from back in the 1800s, or did the guys that fa- you know, fi- found it uh, get it? So I can see why they're on board. Why uh, Clinton is just doing it for maybe publicity because it's a chick. I don't know. You would think that she has enough publicity, seeing that she holds as high of an office as she does. What is she doing? He always says this is a great honor, and possibly in the search itself. <laughs> wow. Oh man, Hillary! I, I did not expect that. Hillary's also going to be doing a uh, a new reality show she starting is? next uh, next next fall. Actually, you're so kidding. No, everyone loves Hillary. That's What's her reality show about? No, I'm just playing. Oh. <laughs> I was like, wow, there's no way. <laughs> All right, uh, let's talk about the fruit flies real fast. Okay. Um, scorn male fruit flies turn to booze, according to a new study. According to the researchers at the University of California, San Francisco, rejected male fruit flies consume four times more alcohol than those who had recently made it. Yeah. Uh, via the report, the oh, scientists yeah. put 24 male fruit flies... In one of two situations, half the males were placed in vials uh, in groups of four, each group with 20 female flies that were ready to mate, allowing the males to mate with multiple females. The other half of the males were put alone in vials, each with one female that had already mated, making her reject any courtship advances. After four days of repeated mating or rejection, the male flies were moved to new containers with capillaries containing food mass, some with alcohol and others without, so they could eat. A chemical in the male fruit fry brain, brain called, I'm not even going to try and pronounce it, likely caused them to drown their sorrows far in rejection, but they said more research is needed. So basically they're saying is the males that got rejected started drinking. Yeah, like the the main thing that like happened that's like really kind of interesting to me though is that like, so these fruit flies 
what happens is, uh, and there's basically a human equivalent of this to the fruit flies, why, which is why they do so much testing on fruit flies. But um, the humans, for, or the, uh, the fruit flies, for instance, once like a male interacts with a female, there's a certain like chemical that they expound onto the female, and that makes it to where basically that girl is off limits. So now all the fruit flies that are around there, all the male fruit flies that still haven't had sex, they're just sitting there going, well, we can't do her. <laughs> what are we going to do? And they gave them options of water and alcohol, and every single time they would go for the alcohol. Now, this is uh, like, it's kind of interesting because you wouldn't think that they would be doing that because they aren't thinking that deeply. But this shows that there's like some serious thought process that, that's actually going on and something as simple as a fruit fly. Now you take this over into uh, like for instance Australia where they got these monkeys that uh, there's actually like beaches in Australia where when you set up your drink there's a sign right in front of you that says if you don't watch your drink it will be stolen. And a lot of people think that that's going to be like some homeless guy just comes by and nicks your uh, little drink or whatever. It's actually monkeys. These monkeys will come by and take them without people looking and run into the back and start drinking all of everybody's booze. I've had that happen to my uh, snicker bar one time playing golf with squirrels. Really? I looked over like, where the hell did my my food go? And then I see these birds and, and uh, attacking a squirrel, and there's my candy bar. He's in there eating it. It's pretty funny. <laughs> but uh, you got to watch them, man. Yeah. The I, they're, uh, they're, they're taking a liking to uh, the booze. So yeah. watch your booze. Wow. Interesting, <laughs> interesting. You know, the booze people got to love it because it helps us buy another beer. Yeah, lose the beer. They're getting a, a market they didn't have before. They're gonna start unleashing these monkeys into uh, random bars. They're broadening the they're uh, broadening more. their demographics. <laughs> yes, you know they're getting uh, monkeys boozed up. Just helps the sales out a little bit. <laughs> you know, I'm watching the In and Out Burger. And I'm seeing different people walk through, and uh, it's kind of interesting. Man, to people watch here a little bit. Uh huh. Like there goes a family of like five. I see a lot of groups, kind of gang activity going on over there or something. I mean, yeah, lots of I groups of people. They're they're older white people. I think that you're getting a lot of, like, office groups, probably. They're like, oh, I'm going to go to In-N-Out. You want anything? Oh, let's all just go to In-N-Out. Well, that one there had a kid, <laughs> so they're probably not an office group. But maybe, okay. yeah, but the other group definitely was, probably was an office scenario. All right. Is that all the news we got there, Sam? That's yeah. important. Let's just move on then. Uh, let's do this. Let's go to break. When okay. we come out, I want to I talk to you about GPS. And actually, I have a video. It's on my phone because I was so freaked out about this that I was like, I got to document what just happened, dude. Okay. And it was bizarre, and I was just—I felt like I was in a, the world's the worst Twilight movie in the world, and I could not escape <laughs> this area of Texas, and I was just freaking out about it. So when we come back. Let's get to that. We'll put the video up, man, and hopefully, and uh, cool. We'll be back in like uh, we'll come back in five minutes. Okay. And uh, we'll just have a little brain power session here about what we can talk about next. And uh, don't go nowhere, man. We're live at Dallas Furniture. Located at 635 and Midway Road. Uh, the phone number is 972-241-4441. 972-241-4441. Give these guys a call if there's anything you're interested in. Uh, I'm sure they can take care of you, help you out. Uh, we'll be back in five minutes, man.
All right, guys, welcome back to Action Living with Sunbrew Brandon. I got Jimmy in the house and also Sam the Mailman. Guys, Jimmy, what'd you do? Run next across the street? <laughs> At breakneck speed. The second that we went to break, I ran across the street to In N Out Burger. Well, now, why would you choose coffee in the middle of the day? I don't get that. Uh, well, I would normally be uh, having another monster right now, but I'm trying to cut, da- uh, cut down on my monster intake. Okay. So. Yeah, that's good, but I don't know if that's the best thing to replace it with. <laughs> Um, well, coffee's pretty good for you. I mean, like, there's a lot of good things for it. Uh, some bad things, but definitely not as bad as, you know, a monster energy drink. Yeah. So. All right. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to email this video. I don't think it's going to go through, but uh, we'll try it real fast. Put your email address in there for me. Um, there you go. I'll see if it'll email to you. Right, it might work. All right. So uh, I smell the In-N-Out burger. Way to go. That's making me hungry. Um, the coffee does nothing for me whatsoever, so now I'm kind of jealous Although that doesn't really go the diet plan we're trying to work on, man. The uh, in and out doesn't seem to be oh, our. Oh, uh, I don't do diets, man. That's uh, diets are for people that are being lazy. Okay, like I go out and I, I bike all. Like yesterday, I spent the entire day biking. I probably did like twenty eight miles biking. Hold on, so, really? Yeah. So I mean, like you know, if I can have Sit an in and out burger the next day, then so two, be it. Two videos. Okay, now here's the question: What kind of bike were you biking on these twenty eight miles? Um, it was like a cruiser style, I guess. Once again, so. we're just at a loss. Did it have multiple gearings where you could switch uh-huh. the gears? Okay, so did, did it have a? Could it bounce a little bit? It had like shocks on it? No, it was pretty uh pretty awkward when we went off off roading with it. So, who is we? Who's your uh, partner on this? Jansen, a friend of mine, Jansen, and another guy um, named Jared. That uh, yeah, we're probably gonna end up doing that quite a bit actually. Jansen and Jared. All right, yep. look at y'all, man. Jason. Oh, uh, Jansen, the three Jared, J's. Yeah. You are like an acapella group. We are. The three J's. Oh, how, how sweet. Like a boy band, but you're not boys anymore. You're a man band. There we are. Wow. Congratulations <laughs> on that, dude. I bet y'all look great together. We did. Now, what kind of what kind of uh, bikes are they riding on? Uh, it was all kind of the same style. Uh, Jansen had a little bit more of like a mountain bike style, so when we ended up going off-roading, uh, he ended up doing a little bit better that way. All right. But, a couple things we need to tell our viewers. We uh, definitely need to work on our break. Now, we switched up. We're actually using a, what, Ustream now? Ustream, yeah. We're no longer part of Justin TV Mm-mm. because they 18 and over us. Yeah, they didn't care for us, so, you know, why, why would we uh, share? The whole G4 thing got to them. Yeah. Now, with uh, Ustream, do we have a Ustream channel and just like the other one? Yep. All right. So, But we're going to start doing the podcasting anyway and also putting the videos up, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm going to say this on air right now. So t- tomorrow... Two things are going to happen. Can people go to their phones and listen to us tomorrow? Tomorrow, people will be able to. I still need to get the uh, login info from you because we're kind of back and forth on that. No, the one that you sent me didn't work, but we're going to have to figure out whatever the login info is for that. Um, And then I think that the best way to go about it is just putting a link on the website to where they can actually listen to it live. Um, or something like that. So we're gonna have to figure that out. But all right, let's get that figured out for eventually sure. Eventually, we should get an app. That right. should probably be the thing. And tomorrow we're gonna be at the Sunbrew Studios. Uh, we'll not be at uh, on a location. We'll be at the Sunbrew Studios. So no, no more. Uh, at least for a week or so, no more uh, lingerie lunch. Are we getting pinched again? Uh, not tomorrow. We're gonna take no? a break, man. Okay. We're, uh, we're gonna pull that off because we're gonna be in the studios. Thought we kind of keep it simple tomorrow. Uh, give Andy a day off. She's probably at some point going, oh, man, okay, I'd like to take my Wednesday off for a few minutes. Yeah. Maybe not. She seems to enjoy coming by the show. She's mm-hmm. fun to have on there. She likes seeing you pull your pants down. <laughs> <laughs> you notice that? Uh-huh. I'm going to help you. You got like a little, little hair going hair on sticking there. out of your microphone. I thought you were going to start like kind of caressing my chest. <laughs> no. I was going to be like, oh, isn't that, isn't no that sweet? We're no getting caressing. close. <laughs> all right, let's do a couple things I want to talk about. Uh, let's let's talk <laughs> about, um, first of all, let's mention where we're at. We're at Dallas Furniture. Uh, located at 635 in Midway, right next to the In-N-Out Burger. Uh, the phone number there is 972-241-4441. Easy number to memorize. 972-241-4441. The uh, website is furnituregroups.com. So go on there, see online, see their selection, man. Uh, right here in front of me, I'm looking at one, two, three, four. And I'm surrounded by six beds within uh, 10 feet of me, okay? Or five feet of me, I should say. Yeah. Big selection of beds. They really have the best deal going on these mattresses. These, uh, I don't know how would you call the pillow top. I guess what, how you'd uh-huh. refer to them as the pillow top mattresses, which means it's got extra softening effects on your back. Um, literally probably half to a third of the cost of the uh, the competition out there because I've seen them advertise. I get ads every day from some place that's uh, selling these mattresses. So they feel really good. I've jumped up on them a few times. Now, I want to tell you, Jimmy, I know that behind the scenes in the works, uh, we have the support 
from the actual beanbag manufacturer for the beanbag jump. Okay. And I didn't know this till just a while ago, how scared you are of this jump. Yeah, well, you know, um, I like to... I, if I'm going to do something stupid, I like to, it to be my own decision, you know? And Brandon, you, you're the kind of guy that will squeeze somebody into a corner until they have to do it. So, you know, I don't usually take to that too lightly. I've never been a person who's, uh, you know, pushed into things. So we'll have to see. Well, I'm not going to push you into I'm going to push yeah. you off of something, the right. roof. You, oh, <laughs> well, yeah, you'd have to get me up there first, you oh, know. Oh, but oh, uh, we'll get you up there, man. <laughs> we got to set the cameras up. we got to have the interview on the roof. Um, what, uh, what I'm going to extend the camera up with a very long pole. <laughs> yeah. Well, is it, what is the fear here? I mean, you know the, the bags are quality rated based on their height of the jump. My, They're all labeled. My problem is, is that there's no way to be secure. I can jump off of there right onto the concrete, and I have no problem with that. Okay, so you're, no on, on. With that. you're telling me you'll jump off the roof up here. Onto the concrete, no problem. No, no, no. You were saying that we're going to do it from 10 feet. I no, guarantee that's you I can do it. <laughs> Come on, dude. That's a test. Oh, jump. are you jumping off uh, the thing onto the bean bags from the, the roof? roof? Yes. Oh, I thought you were wanting to do it from 10 feet. No, I want to do a test run. I'm not <laughs> stupid. You I think you're insane, and I don't think that it's going to end well. But if you want to, by all means. Why would you think it's insane? Um, well, it's about 18 feet into bean bags, which are going to split and separate all over the place. So and then it's, even it's if they don't, 18, it's about twenty five feet. We we figured out. Okay, so even worse. And then on top of that, you've got bean bags that aren't going to respond in a way that you hope they are going to respond. They may, you may get lucky, and they do, but there's a damn good chance that they won't. Knowing so, the manufacturer is going to be here, I was told. Mm -hmm. Knowing that Todd is, I'm sure Todd would not let me do anything uh, that would hurt me. Uh -huh. You don't have faith in Todd. Uh, I never said that. I don't have faith in the situation in which you are brewing here. So, <laughs> all right. Um, okay. So you're going to be the weenie of the show. I will be. Look at you, weenie man. I will be. You know See, how long I will tease you about this, and it won't matter. I mean, like, I, I, I don't give in to that kind of stuff. So, like, uh, I'm totally content with the fact that, like, later tonight. I could go home, play some dubstep without, you know, <laughs> worrying about my back giving out. Like, I'm not wanting to be in pain for the next two weeks because of some silly stunt in which I was going to be considered oh, a weenie. Oh, this is silly to you. This is silly. I bet the manufacturer <laughs> of those beanbags don't think it's silly at all. No, they think that their beanbags are very serious, but it would be silly to jump off of a roof into them. Not so. Let's just say there's a chasing happening, okay? Uh -huh. Do you not watch action shows? Nuh-uh. Okay, you should. Let's say that someone's chasing you. Where do you go? Have you ever, you know what? As a kid, you know we had a pole that we'd climb up. It was some kind of like gas pole or something. It went to the uh -huh. top of the roof at the school, very tall school. We would actually scale that. I have to use the word scale. Mm -hmm. Scale the wall using that pole. Get yeah. up there. Now let's say you're on top of the roof. You realize when you're on top of the roof, you're stuck up there. If you're being chased, you're stuck there. Do you realize that? Yeah, I've been chased onto a few roofs in my time. Okay, one time I ran away and stayed on that top of that roof. I thought that was the safest place in my neighborhood, which it was. Mm -hmm. But if I get chased, you got to jump. There's nowhere to go but down. Mm -hmm. Guess what? If I happen to have a beanbag, I might throw it on the ground and jump onto it and be safe and get away. You know, what we used to do is we used to use our brain and lure the people <laughs> that were chasing us to one side of the building, wait for them to start scaling that side of the building and go down the other. There was no other side. There's only one pole at this building. Uh, you always have to have an exit strategy. <laughs> well, that's that's <laughs> why we... Hello, that's what we're talking about, the beanbag uh -huh. jump. Oh, no, you went up the wrong roof then. You have to know that there's two ways down. Well, there's only one way up in my place <laughs> and only one way down, so I'm creating another way. Look, listen, let's just be real about it. You're not the exciting kind of guy that women are attracted to. That's all there's to it. Yeah, you're right. I'm having a very <laughs> hard time lately. Yeah. No, I'm just saying, you, you're not the women that want a thrill. They want a guy that's a little bit gutsy and ballsy, uh -huh. uh, that's willing to take a risk. They also like the ones that are only going to make decisions and stick to them my decision is not to do this so enjoy <laughs> but <laughs> wait to see all the chicks i get from this bro <laughs> visiting you in the hospital i'm not gonna be in the hospital i'm, I'm, I'm gonna your, do a test jump. and your body cast you're just pissed because i know how to do this the right way <laughs> okay it's all about the land hey i'm very excited about it not pissed off at all i'm very excited about what's going to happen here and when i become basically a beanbag jumping superstar in the uh -huh. sport of beanbag jumping and you're left behind 30 million views on you youtube won't, you won't even be the guy that can carry my beanbag 
<laughs> I mean, you won't even let me be your personal beanbag carrier. I would let you carry my bag and grab my bag and do around, but I'm not going to let you touch my bag anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you used to be such a fan of that as well. <laughs> <laughs> wow, dude. All right, well, listen, uh, when I'm getting all the glory, and uh, you'll get nothing. you get nothing. I hope that this does happen. I hope that you do it. It goes sensationally. You become number one on YouTube. Everyone's asking for interviews with the guy who jumped off a roof into the beanbags. But I got to tell you, I don't think that that's the way that this is going to end. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to get tons of 30 million views on YouTube. I think I'm going to be a local superstar in the beanbag world, and I'll probably get an endorsement deal, and uh, life will go on. An endorsement deal? What, so that you can do this like uh, as like a traveling sideshow? No, I'll just talk. I'll never have to do it again. I'll just show the video, the footage, <laughs> and I'll be the guy that did it, and uh, and I'll endorse this, this beanbag. They're based out of Irving. They probably need a sp- I don't think they have a spokesman right now. Uh-huh. Hey, look, that's me. What other guy can stay clean to the jump? The twenty. Then you know it's gonna suck. Someone's gonna hit a thirty foot roof. Try mm. to outdo me. Yep. <gasps> it's probably gonna be a child. Stop. They're gonna fall to their. Uh, you can know. we can, can we contact Guinness Book of World Records? Is there a beanbag jump? And I've contacted about doing stuff before. This is the kind of thing that can make it in there. It's new. It's different. The bean. Do it. Can you do that, Sam? Get a hold of Guinness. Can you get a hold of Guinness and see if this could be a uh, if I could get down for a record for beanbag jump? I'm sure there's not, but there if there is, I hope there's not. Oh, now, yeah. if you could get a hold of Guinness, make sure that you know he's able to actually get that uh, as a world record, and then also see if they could send over uh, a few hundred pints. That would be great. All right, I'm going to Guinness World <laughs> Book of Records. What is it for bean ba- what is bean bag jumping? Jumping into bean bags? I don't bean know. Bag jumping. All right, let me oh, look dude. this up. I'll be the first guy. I bet I'm the only pro because if you get paid, you're pro, right? Let's just. I mean, we're paid to do an appearance, uh-huh. so I'm a pro bean bag jumper. Yeah, dude, just like Sam Willoughby was a pro BMXer. He got a chick. <laughs> you said it like there were so few left, and he was able to pick up one of them. <laughs> no, he, I'm just saying, <laughs> could you imagine what's going to happen to this? Dude, down his furniture, oh, they could be the home. They could put my picture on the wall. I could endorse the beanbag. Yeah. Have me sitting in a pile of them like this. Yeah. Arms out, maybe a couple chicks on my side, <laughs> and put Brandon Shaw. I could sign autographs. Body cast with girls no all around body cast, No body cast. Let's say I do get a body cast. Chicks, remember... Two things. Bones heal and chicks dig scars. Mm. Yeah, think about it. Okay, what well, I want uh what do I put in beanbag jumping from how many feet or we'll just put beanbag jumping in general. Let's just see there and the record exists. It probably doesn't, but if it does, we want to top it for sure. Up to fifty feet now, Brandon. Are you still <laughs> yeah, in? I got there's a limit, <laughs> bro. Uh, it says there's no results for beanbag jumping. No guts, no okay, glory. See can you figure out who we contact? Well, about it's it. You have to fill out a form online. All Set right. a record, you apply, then you invite a judge. There's all sorts of... Register now to start your application. <gasps> this is greatness. And then You're not Guinness, Guinness World Records. World Records. <laughs> <laughs> you can submit your uh, video for Guinness World Records Challengers. Seeking a record-breaking solution. There's like different things here you'd have to to uh, fill out in order to get a judge. I'm not good at form, but if one of y'all wants to fill it out, I would I would definitely like to go for the record. It that comes with the cost though. Uh how much? Uh it's not in US dollars, so I don't know. What's oh, it in pounds? This equals approximately sixty four hundred dollars to eighty three hundred dollars to get a judge out here to verify. What? So if you want to be in the Guinness Book of World Records, you gotta spend six thousand mm-hmm. dollars. That's just stupid. What no way. The presence of an official judge is not compu- is not compulsory in order to attempt a record, though. I don't know that word. What'd you say? <laughs> it's not. A, you don't have to have a judge out here to to make it. Official, oh well, apparently. then there we go. Let me see the. Could I get one of the guys from In Out Burger, the cooks? <laughs> I don't know about that. Seem like upstanding people. Yeah. How you doing, sir? Can I help you? We're now doing customer service during the uh, the podcast. Why not? <laughs> We're on payroll. Why can't I help him, man? <laughs> He's looking for a good deal of furniture. I bet I could find something right here in the store for him, couldn't I? Mm-hmm. What, do you got a problem with this? Do you think, you think I'm just strictly a beanbag jumper? 
Well, I don't know. I think that you uh, might be, uh, you know, spreading yourself too thin with all these new things that you're doing. <laughs> you got to do customer service on your way down from a beanbag. I jump. need sponsorship for this, man. You do. So hold on. So we are you still researching, Sam? Or no, it's just a form you're supposed to fill out online. Right? Okay, I, so basically, I go for the record, Guinness, mm-hmm. and uh, wow, this is so awesome, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Ha- I don't hold. Honestly, I don't hold any records uh, in the in the in the world record book. Yeah, many people don't. Yeah, <laughs> but I w- but I could. Uh-huh. Uh, oh, this is awesome. Um, okay, so basically, now would you do it if you could be in the Guinness Book of World Records forever? Well, someone will beat it one day. Well, if they send over some Guinness, I might get a little bit of a uh, you know liquid courage. Would might you be able would to you do this do if, you, if you know that if you p- attempt this and it worked out, you could be in the world record book? Nah. You're such a puss. That's not part of my. That's not part of my things to do list. Well, no, but you can't add stuff to it. Mm, things that excite me, You're I'll definitely be putting those on my. This wouldn't excite list. you. No. No, the thing is, is that there's a uh, a mixture of risk and reward that I put into uh, my decision making. This does not have near enough reward for me. Oh jeez, you're kidding me? Yeah, no, no. If uh, if all of a sudden they were like, "Hey, fifty thousand dollars," so the guy is able to do it, I am scaling that thing with my bare hands. And you're thinking that I don't have a chance in hell of getting a fifty thousand dollars sponsorship? Oh well, if that's the case, then we're talking a whole different situation here. Endorsement deals? Look, listen. First of all, <laughs> I pull this off. That beanbag company is going to make me their spokesman. First of all, that's a given. All right, done deal. A billion dollar. Then, then you get appearances. Company. Then you get appearances. Appearances, uh-huh. I tell you. At, at furniture stores all across the U.S. where they sell their beanbags. That's how this works. Then you get so you get a, a money for each appearance. Oh, but now you're having to do appearances on top of this. This I, isn't I just like jumping off of the roof. I like the appearances. That's I fun. would like the money from the appearances for jumping off the roof. No, okay. Send my video to all these other locations. No, you go. That's not how it works. You got to show up and you got to <laughs> sign pictures, shake hands. People are going to meet the guy that got the record. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's part of the deal. I mean, you, so you would have a problem getting paid five hundred bucks to go hang out for two hours. For an appearance, come on, dude, you would do that in a heartbeat. Um, well, it depends. I get the fifty thousand dollars for jumping off the roof, and now I get to just go home with my fifty grand. No, you're gonna tell again. Me. I make decisions based on what's important at the time. So, if you could spend the next week traveling to, I don't know, Arkansas, Tennessee. Ark, no, I'm not going. No. And you're getting five hundred bucks nope. per appearance, two appearances a day. You're not, not paying, you're not making going a thousand. To you're not interested in making a thousand dollars a day on appearance fees for being the guy that jumped off the building. Going into Arizona, Arkansas, Alabama. Yeah. You get to come back, fool. <laughs> you got, you're gone for a week. Uh, I don't know, man. It be it would it would be a tough. It would be a hard to talk me into. Bro, it. I'm I'm gonna be honest <laughs> with you. If you wouldn't do that, I would have a major. I don't know, man. I'd have a lot of less respect for you. Really? Why? Because if you're getting a thousand bucks a day, you leave for one week. You come back. You come back with five, six thousand dollars in your pocket. So what? You you it's not gonna be horrible to have in and out burgers there probably too. You, or, nah, I bet you they don't. And they may not. You're yeah. actually you're right about that. <laughs> but that's a lot of money to make just for one week. Oh, it time. is. But now you're going to a place uh that you don't necessarily want to be for a week. On top of that you have to I want to be something. anywhere for a week that's gonna pay me a thousand bucks for about four hours of work per day. Yeah, I'll make myself comfortable. <laughs> I'll find me a good hotel to stay in. Okay. You know, I'll crash. I'll go do, do my parents at some place. Once again, I don't know why you're uh, upset with this. It sounds like we're finding out that this is a perfect career move for you and that you don't need me to uh, be a part of it. You're right. I don't want you part of it. I want to cut in my profits. I'm just I know. I'm just going to take like some of the $1,000 off of it. I'm just surprised it. you wouldn't take advantage of the situation that's before us. Um. Well, yeah. I very quickly you'll probably find out that it's not really about the the money necessarily. You can't handle the fame. Ah, uh, that's what it is. Yeah, that's what it is. That's it, dude. <laughs> they, well, they might requ- they might require you wear a different shirt than black. Ah, uh, see, that's exactly the kind of stuff that I would not be interested in. Just think, right here, you have your Dallas Furniture logo on your sleeve. They got three locations. They got one mm. in Plano, so let's do an appearance out there. Gonna head out to Ennis at their other location, do an appearance there, and of course, maybe come here once a week, do an appearance. You're, uh, I mean, you're right. You probably couldn't handle it. Nope. You have to logo your shirt out. Mm-hmm. Throw one on the hat like I got my S squared logo right there. Yeah. All right, dude. All right. Well, listen, it's going to be all me then. <laughs> Sam, you want some of this action? I'm a wimp. I don't uh, do those type of for things. The, for the money, though, would you do it? For the $5,000 a week in appearance fees traveling? Uh, uh, yeah, look at it. I don't know, man. I'd yeah, have to you do try it. Try and convince myself. I'm I could get Pugs to do this for 400 bucks a week right now to do appearance fees, man. He would be all about this because unlike the other 
things we suggested him dating and doing. This is like a cakewalk. Yeah. Well, I'll call Pugs up. Maybe he wants to jump <laughs> off the building. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I think I would. I, I could, would love to see that too. I shouldn't say this on air, but I would do it for a lot less. <laughs> you know, like uh-huh. I said, I mean, nah, I, I, there's a price. I got a. Uh, I'd like to get me an energy drink sponsor for it to get me the boost to jump off. I would probably want to land on my brand new Nike, my Nike Airs. Mm-hmm. Get that sponsor as your rolling. ankles crack because the uh, the bag gave out. No, that in a way you weren't expecting. They're they're, <laughs> they're triple stitch and they're double reinforced with zippers. It's not going to give out. Right, and but if ready. you were to punch the uh, the raw end of one of these bags, you don't know how your fist is going to end. If you really I give punch. it all your push, yeah, sure, go punch that bag right now, big boy. No, no, no. If you, you had the if hardest you, punch. Uh, no, if you if you were to punch that, you would find that it's going to be a lot different than like a punching bag, for instance, because a punching bag is fully inflated, essentially. You know what I mean? Oh, is it? So okay. when you're hitting it, like it's not going to give as much. This gives in a lot of awkward ways based on the stitching. So you aren't going to be 100% positive that when your feet hit it, when your back hit it, it's going to cave in exactly the way you wanted it to. That's the part that I have a problem with. It's science, Brandon. Science. Dude, just whatever. <laughs> whatever. I mean, listen, I'm glad you're not part of this. I don't want to chop up the pie. No, you and you and I, I both. Want the whole pie. I want you to have the whole pie. It's Todd your is, pie. Todd assures me that the, the Dallas furniture is going to put up some barriers, like using the mattresses. I got to tell you, man, would you jump on one of these mattresses from 25 feet? Um, I'd be more into jumping onto the mattress, I think. What I'm worried about is with the, with the mattress, would you spring back up? Would you jump down and it would, you would land and jump right back up? Um, I don't think that you would jump. It's a it's a it's a long fall, so it's not really made for those. But I think that you would have a better chance of hitting that mattress in a um, a better way. All right. Well, if you want to see spine. the bean bags that we're talking about, check out these stores, man. They've got them, and they got all sorts of colors. They got the pinks, the greens, the purples, the blacks. Lots of bean bag action going on over here at uh, Dallas Furniture. Yeah, and these aren't just for kids. If you're an adult, obviously you can do the adult thing and jump off of roofs onto them. Yeah, we're not recommending that. By the way, you got to be careful, <laughs> Jimmy. Be careful there, dude. Lawsuits are people start jumping off roofs and don't do it the right way. We're doing it the right way. Right. We're gonna do a safety check. Uh huh. So uh, these I was are, just saying adults. Hopefully they are, would be smart enough to do that. You don't want to jump more than foot. They ha- they're rated. Uh, there's <laughs> they're rated four foot. Flop on them. Look at this. We got a lady coming in. She's checking out the bean bags. They're waving. They got a kid. Look at this. We're like a family show now. Jelena's going to greet him at the front door. Look at that. Always with mm-hmm. a smile, too. Yep. That's customer service there, Jimmy. That is. And let's watch that little kid's delight when she sees those beanbags in a minute. She's going <laughs> to see those beanbags and be all, but she's like, she's a future jumper. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's move on, man. Let's move on. Let's talk about TV. Sam, what did you watch this week, man? Um, well, I watched The Apprentice on Sunday night. Let's talk about that. Let's start there, man. Apprentice. Oh, those women just are so catty and hate each other. Hold it's on, great. I missed it this week. You missed it? Yeah, because I was at the track. I fell. I came home. I fell asleep, and my DVR did not record it. Oh, so God. let's skip that because okay. I want to talk about. I need to watch it. You I think can watch it's it on, online. It's on demand, right? Yeah, it's probably on demand. Or you can okay. go to NBC.com. All right, I'll go watch that. Let's talk about. Let's see. Uh, Mob wives. Don't watch that one. You don't watch uh, Good Christian Bees. GCBs? No, I still haven't gotten into that. I watched, tried to watch the first one. I watched like 10 minutes of it. Looks like something that I would like, but I don't know. I'm going to have to. Let's go with Dance with the Stars for a minute. We'll talk All about right. that. You, you brought it up. Let's. You got Martina Navratilova, whatever. Navratilova. By the way, breaking news. Sorry, a 7.9 magnitude earthquake just struck southern Mexico. 7.2? Oh, wow. 7.9. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, what geez. part? Uh, southern Mexico, it says. Southern Mexico. Like, th- towards, like, the eastern? Um, it doesn't say. Let me see if it... There's, oh, wait, but there is a link. It's, they so that's not near the cartel tunnels that get to the U.S. Where they dig underneath the ground? Uh, um, 120 miles east of Acapulco on Mexico's Pacific coast. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's a pretty strong earthquake right there. It said Even people th- in California aren't going to laugh at you about that one. It said no destructive tsunami, but the possibility of some local tsunami effects. Mm-hmm. The quake Man. was felt in Mexico City. It's far up in Mexico City. Yeah, it's pretty intense. I mean, like, most of that area over there is a little less densely populated, so that's kind of good news. I mean, it doesn't seem like it's going to be, like, an urban mecca center, you know, but 
It's pretty intense, man. You never know when that's going to happen. That's the part that's really crazy. You know, people in California, they'll laugh at you because you get, like, these really small fives or something, you know? Yeah. But, like, at any moment, you could just be on your way home, on your way to school, whatever it is, and boom, it hits you. I mean, these things are massive. All of a sudden, they're, you know, got tsunamis, you know, as warnings. Oh, man, what a mess. But hope everything's all right. All right, so how do we go to the earthquakes from the oh, of the story? Oh, it was breaking news. That's right. I'm so, okay. We had the beep breaking news. Please yeah. stay tuned. All right, off of, back to the dance from the star. So, who's the uh, highlight last night? Uh, the highlight. Let's see. Everybody did really well. Everyone got good scores. Um, Urkel, as we said earlier, he did really well. He got the highest scores of the night. Okay. All white. Uh, this lady, Catherine Jenkins. I'm not quite sure who she is, but. She's a hot blonde, and she got high scores uh, right behind Steve Urkel. Oh, Steve Urkel, Jamal White. He must be being called. Uh, oh, God, he is forever labeled that Urkel guy. But for the money he got, I'd do it. There's some uh, Mexican s- Telenova, the Mexican soap opera star, William Levy. He did really well, um, although the judges were applauding him. Bruno went crazy over him because Bruno's gay, and he's like t- telling him he should take his shirt off. Wait, the the character Bruno? No, no, no. There's three judges on him dancing with stars. There's Carrie oh. Ann and Abla, who is smoking hot. Have you ever seen Carrie Ann? She's lost a lot of weight. Oh, she's smoking Looks hot. Looks good now. Then there's Len Goodman, the old guy, and then there's Bruno, the Italian guy. Bruno, I want to say his last name. This is, to me, the most uninteresting Dance with the Stars that's came out yet. Yeah, the, I'm the not cast, even. I don't even want to continue the story at this cast point. Cast isn't much, but, yeah, they all did well last night. Let, let's, let's, let's move on. I'm just shocked that the ratings are so high. Because I got oh, I zero, last night. zero oh. interest in any of these I'm going to find a picture of Carrie for Jimmy, though, while we move on. I was hoping it was Sasha Barrett Cohen's uh, oh, no. Bruno. That would make for a great show, and I would have felt like I had missed something last yeah, night. Yeah, I'd like to see him show up in character and do the, the, do the dance with the stars. That'd be all, I'd watch yeah. that. See, I'd be into that. Him as a judge? Uh, was, there's another show I wanted to talk about that was coming out. Uh, what was it on? Oh, let's talk about Two and a Half Men. Yes. All right. Two and a Half Men. I liked the show last night. First of all, that little fat little kid that's a dopey little kid, he's really becoming a young man now. Oh, he's, who's Jake? He, I don't know. His name. Yeah, Jake. The son? He looks much different. He's going to be, you know, he'll be getting dates and stuff, man. It's amazing how much mm. he's transformed uh, into a normal kind of guy from the, the loaf that he was as a kid. Yeah. What and he, by the way, that mmm was not me thinking about Jake. <laughs> it, was, it was me looking at the picture that Sam was showing me. <laughs> Of Carrie Ann and Abla from... Uh, yeah, oh, he's song. turning into a man. <laughs> Good timing there, Jimmy. <laughs> yeah, he's grown up. Like, his face, he's really skinny. And he looks like such a geek on the show now. <laughs> now I think he looks better now. Like, he looks like... A, I mean, he's, he's like, you know, he just looks like a kind of normal guy that would go out. And, you know, I'm sure females are attracted to him now. But he was so fat and chubby as a kid and kind of dopey looking. Yeah. But now but, he's 18. But he wears those glass, those geeky, like... Glasses and I don't know he, he's just lost like his whole neck. He's really skinny now. He's lost he's lost all that baby fat that he had growing yeah, up. Yeah, and he had a lot of it. The show last night, Timmy, took a little twist there. Uh-huh. First of all, there's a you know it's funny. There's a lot of there's a lot of talk of with using the words like masturbation. Okay, and uh, oh, I know there is. It's gotten very dirty. <laughs> I was well, when about you that. start getting bad. You have to get dirtier. When you see like shows like this, so like Two and a Half Men, like King and Queens, they they reference. And I've always thought it's funny when they reference a lot of sexual stuff. And these are shows that kids would watch, okay? Right. And uh, to use like the words masturbation just seemed like that'd be a no no. But it's done. It's not. There's so much sexual talk, um, you know, in these shows at prime time that. Man, we just live in a different society well, now. Well, you're forgetting, though, Whoa. this show airs at 9.30 Eastern time. So, I mean, it's, even though it's 8.30 Central, it's 9.30 on the East Coast and the West Coast. So it does air later in certain markets. Than yeah, that's true. Dallas. But but, uh, but uh, what's interesting about last night, though, is at the very end of the show, uh, and by the way, they made Courtney Thorne Smith, or whatever her name is, out to be the biggest lush. Oh, yeah. Uh, she went from Melrose hottie, like real conservative, whatever, to this. She's just a, they make her out to be the biggest just lush loser. pill popper, but she has been since the character came on. So, yeah, she's a burping, uh, a belching, throwing up, uh, uh, tooting. I mean, whatever you want to say. She's a guy. Yeah, she is a guy. Um, but I'll tell you, though, last night, Jimmy, guess what happened? What's that? Her mom... And uh, what's his name? What's Charlie's mom? 
Char- his name is yeah Charlie's mom. But what's the other guy? Ducky Dale. What's his oh name? Um, John Alan? Cryer. Alan. Yeah, Alan played by John Cryer, and her mom met up, and they woke up together. They had a very very they had a touching kissing scene at the end. Alan and somebody's mom. No, no. Alan's mom uh-huh. and Courtney, his his girlfriend's mom, his lover. The two moms. Alan has a girlfriend now. Yes, yeah. he's okay. had her. Okay. Uh, let's forget Jimmy. He don't watch. <laughs> <laughs> he watches, but I don't think he knows who people are. At the end of the people. show, these two ladies embrace for a nice smooch, a kiss on the lips. They mm-hmm. slept together the night before. But they made it clear that his mom, Evelyn, has been with women before. Yeah, but it was just so. interesting that they did this <laughs> much older. Let's be careful. There's, there's yeah, that's why I was trying kids. to uh, But it's much different that these two older women – did what they did, and they showed it how they woke up together the next day. It was very funny. I mean, but it's also like that's something they couldn't have done 20 years ago. I mean, to well, have that kiss on TV like that happened, but now they did something different and unique. I've never seen two older ladies do this. That one lady sets the uh, – she plays the mom in so many shows like uh, – she was on Everyone Loves Raymond. Loves Raymond. That's right, right. as uh, that chick's mom. Uh, and originally on the Mary Tyler Moore show. Yes. She done some other stuff. She was in a show I saw this weekend where she was played like a much, much older lady. What was that? Was that a movie or show? Oh, she was in something else. It's just this weekend I saw her. But uh, but yeah, just very weird that these two at the end uh, had a nice kiss. They woke up together. You know, very, very. Um, I don't know. Well, the days of the internet, man. Uh, that's why when I was growing up, there were shock jocks. There were the Howard Stearns, the Opie and Anthony's. And that's what they were branded. They were supposed to be shocking because they were the only time that you would actually hear about certain things, you know, talked about comfortably in, ca- in conversation. And then, like, now there's no room for shock jocks because nothing's really shocking. You know what I mean? Like, you got things like that. And I remember when Ellen first came out. I was a massive fan of uh, The Ellen Show. And uh, I remember there was one time, and uh, God bless my grandpa, man. He was just from another time. And uh, I put on Ellen in, uh, in the living room. And my grandpa's in the back, and he's watching this, right? Right. And now she's openly out during this show. And my grandpa, oh, man, I, I can't even say the words that are coming out of his mouth as I'm watching this. And uh, some of them being directed back at me. And, like, you know, it, it just showed, like, how quickly things can evolve, you know, like where, like, 10 years later, that's just, that's a conversation that just doesn't really take place anymore. You know, now Ellen's one of the most well-beloved person, you know, in, uh, in probably the country. Yeah. According to J.C. Penney, she is. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, she does that little dance. You ever watch her little dance on her show? They always dance. Yeah. Um, it's fun, man. It's, it, it's catchy. It catches you. It makes you want to dance a little bit. I don't know if she's considered a good dancer, bad dancer, but she dances. That's her do stick. Do you dance when she dances when you watch I, it? Yeah, do sometimes I do. Yeah, absolutely. Can you show us uh, some of the moves? No, no, I can't do Get that. The camera going. People <laughs> want to see you do the Ellen dance. I need the music. I got to have the music. Let, let's, let's move on. Um, don't you don't want to do a live dance? No. no. Um, let's, but we got a couple topics to get. I, you know, I probably would do it, but um, you can't see my fancy footwork with that angle there. Right. And we have to get to the video. Did you get the videos pulled up that I emailed uh, no, you? Not yet. I want to get to that in a minute about the uh, phone. So I don't, I don't miss that segment. Um, well, what else did you do? Two and a half men. We had a. Uh, you don't watch the uh, GCB. No. It's about the Dallas ladies, the good Christian bees. I'll have to get into that. You know, it's 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 just comical. It's so, uh, but it, I see a lot of truth in that show too. Like, you know, they're obviously exaggerating and all, but there are people just like that. I know some of them. You know, it's obviously out of a Highland Park area. Uh, I like, and the girl's really smoking hot. The main star is just so attractive. No, oh, yeah, I've for seen an older female. Yeah. Oh, she's awesome looking. But um, it's I don't know. It's hard. I, it's it is a stupid show, but I, I, I it's. I guess because it's based in Dallas, I want to watch it. Oh, guys, I have a f- surprise. We have, I have been contacted by, you know what, cliffhanger here. <laughs> Maybe tomorrow we'll get you on. Guess who contacted me? Uh, guess what show has contacted me, Sam, and want to hook up? On the Pugs and Kelly show, we talked about a weekly show based right here in Dallas, Texas. Dallas is most eligible. Oh, yeah. And boy, I have made it. Uh, I've got a bromance going on. And uh, I don't want to say who it is. Let's not even, don't start guessing. I but. I didn't want to show, but I remember the one guy you used to always talk about. So. I, I've got I've got to come connected. We're I, I feel like I remember people saying he would never hang out with me, but I think that's far from the truth. Not only did he contact me back, let me show you how long if I can pull it up. My Facebook pulls up so slow on my phone. Show how long this uh this uh, is it. 
on your page or is it a private message? It's a, pri- a private message. Me oh, and this okay. guy, we're buddies, man. We're buddies now. We keep <laughs> it private, man. I don't exploit his uh, success. <laughs> yes, you, you know. do. And, you know, yeah, I guess you're right. But the uh, thing about this is, let's see here. I want to show you this message, man. This guy didn't just contact me back and just take a few seconds. This really, le- look at that. And look at, look at the first sentence. Don't say the name of who it is. But look at the first sentence. Uh, go ahead and say what it says, the first sentence. Hey, what's going on, my friend? There you go. Give me the bag, please. Thank you. <laughs> is that is that private uh, message? Is that it? Look at the message he sent me, how long it is. Oh, he even see. has like six smiley faces at the end. With Brent a is a friend. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let, let's, let's do this. Hey, what's going on, my friend? Yeah, I'd like to hear more about the... Uh, do a possible swing through and check it out sometime. Uh, let's skip, skip, skip. Put LOL. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. Means a lot to me, brother. Calls me brother. Oh. Means a lot to him. Uh, hope you're having a great week with a phone number. See hope the bottom? You're having a great week. Well, Call me soon. Uh, yeah. Wink. Oh. Now, you're all excited? You're going to have a mandate? Yeah. <laughs> the thing about it is, is I have recall. Have you thought about where you're going to take them and what you're going to do? I don't know yet, man. It's like, what do you do for a superstar like this? You know what I mean? Like, you know, they've been everywhere. And it's not like it's, you know what I mean? I think you keep it simple, man. I'm down to earth. He's down to earth. Do you remember? Maybe just go to Dukes or something. Yeah, why not? Why not? Do you do you remember us talking about him much at all? <laughs> there was like two or three guys on that show, so I'm not sure which one he is. Okay, well, I don't get too into it. We'll leave, let it be a cliffhanger. I'm sure the viewing audience is going to be excited we'll here. Well, They're all interesting. Anything. But I just feel like, you know, this is going to be an awesome show. We'll get him on here, talk to him. Is it coming I, back? I don't know, man. We'll ask him that. You know, I don't want to. Come on, dude. I don't want to pry in his business. You know, we're just we're buddies. You don't do that. You don't want to talk shop when you're buddies. You know what I mean? He wouldn't ask me to come over and do well, like a free bikini contest. Does the show? You we'll have we'll to do ask it then. But but on the personal level, we're just being personal here. We're not working together. We're we're communicating. We're talking. You know, like what's what'd you do last night? Really, me too. You know what I mean? Smiley well, facing each other. Yeah. So on that note, I don't want to get into business with him, Sam. If he wants to tell me what's going on in his life. Now, if we put him on the show, yes, we'll cross the line and we'll talk shop, okay? Look at that. Hey, I got to tell you, this location move is the best thing that's ever happened for Dallas Furniture. Even though it's only 30 feet across, there's been some walk-in traffic coming. And that lady just walked out with two bean bags, a green and a pink one. Uh, Jimmy's nice. really going to like this guy. I'm reading his bio. I'll tell you off the air. Okay. No, hold on. You're supposed to not, don't, don't even tell Jimmy who it is. No. Did, did you watch Dallas Most Eligible? No. God, why are you on this show, dude? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you you fit into the Dave show more, don't you, man? Um, I don't know. I just I don't do um TV. So, you know, there's that. Me and you pretty we've gotten pretty close, would you say? Yeah. We've gone out and hung out at Pokes together. Uh-huh. We've went on some dates together. We have. With one girl. Uh-huh. Um uh you know, we've we've I feel like we I feel like we know each other really well all of a sudden. Uh-huh. Um but I gotta tell you, man, it I might be moving on. <laughs> you got a new friend. That's good. Yeah. You got you gotta find uh, somebody who watches them some television. <laughs> watches it. They're on it. Uh. The show that I watch. <laughs> uh, so now you're just becoming a a star effer. Yeah. No, I'm not, dude. Yeah, you are because he's on a TV show. Now no, like, I just oh he uh, he sent me a message back. He called me friend. Now we're gonna go out and hang out. Now I'm gonna ditch everybody else, and this is gonna be my new guy. Yeah. Yeah. We see how you be. Stop bro. it. Stop. Brandon's <laughs> putting all of his eggs in one basket, and uh, <laughs> you know he's so he's gonna be the new co-host. He'll, he'll probably jump off. <laughs> no, the he's, building. he's too busy. He's like, you know, time. We you know he'll we don't jump we, off the building. We don't want to work together because it'll ruin our friendship. Um, <laughs> but no, the the fact of the matter is is. I connected with this guy on the show. I'm not a star type person, but I watched the show enough. I felt a connection. He's a lot like, I mean, if you ask the pugs and them, he's a lot like my life. There is uh, things that are just like what I do. So, there's, hey, listen, dude. Well, it's because you guys have one thing in common. You both have rock hard abs. <laughs> yeah. And that's what his bio <laughs> says with rock hard abs. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Now, you give away... Um, you elimi- I did say what you one eliminated is. one of the uh, people in the show, although they're all probably fit now. Yeah, they're all fit. But um, but I definitely don't have rock hard abs right now. <laughs> Working on getting those back, man. Th- you saw that in the picture I sent you, Jimmy. Remember yes. the abs? Uh huh. Yeah, you noticed the definition, didn't you? <laughs> uh, but um, it was painted on. <laughs> all right. Well, I'm excited about this, obviously, because uh-huh. I was I was like, and I remember being told by Pugs that guy would never hang out with you, 
and and they would have nothing to do with Sunbrew, and yet I saw a Sunbrew girl on their show, by the way. Um, so uh, who, oh, on their show, who, yeah, that we rejected. There was a girl on their show. Wait a minute, you rejected a girl, and then she showed up there. Yeah, and they took. What was wrong with the girl? You re- just didn't have nothing. The, uh, She's the a look. supermodel now. No, yeah. she didn't. No, she <laughs> just probably dating this guy. Didn't have the look. No, I know she's not. I know his style. I know his taste. Uh-uh. Oh, you do? You know his taste now? Yeah. Just um, based on the TV show, or based on your Facebook conversations? Based on a lot of things. Maybe we've been talking on the phone. Y'all don't know about it. You saw oh, I got the number. Oh, if you've reached the phone, that's taking a giant step in your relationship. Yeah. Look, I, have you been t- texting with them normally? You know what we're gonna do? Phone numbers. We're gonna call. And I'm going to make, not request, make Pugs show up for that day. Why would you want Pugs there to take away from your br- blossoming new bro? I want him to sit there and have his think his mic's turned on, which it won't be. No, I want his mic on. I want to call Pugs out. I want to pull back the past show and call Pugs out on the stuff he said about this guy to his face. You know what this is? This is a lot like what a guy does when like a girl breaks up with him and then he starts flaunting a new girl around yeah. the old girlfriend. <laughs> That's what this is. He's going to invite Pugs. He's not allowed to talk. He's just allowed to watch he's, this new bromance blossom. He's trying to make Pugs <laughs> jealous because Pugs hasn't been returning his phone calls. <laughs> That's, what, that the thing is, is that Pugs said this mean these people would never hang out. I mean, I'm going to prove him wrong. Mm. And I want to address some of the stuff that Pug said about this guy. <laughs> Pugs made some comments that I I had to defend him. What kind of what, comments did Pugs make? I don't want to get too much away because so you want to make this more uncomfortable for Pugs. Well, the fact of the matter is, is Pugs made comments. Do you remember me and Pugs me defending this guy? Yeah, but I always tune that out because I never watch the show. Right. Well, there's just some hurtful things that Pugs said, and he doesn't know this guy. Now, are you thinking that if you become friends with this guy, when if they film more, you might be? His body on the show. I don't want to do that. Get some exposure, and all of a sudden, some brews on a on a cable reality show, and then some of your girls are showing up. Then you're getting exposure, and before you know it, Brandon's getting a spinoff show all about Brandon and the Sun. Oh, this could lead. Yeah, you got to be friends with him. Hey, I'm eligible. You got to do whatever he wants you to do. Think about. It. I mean, I fit. In, I mean, I don't fit in their group. I don't dress like they do, and all that stuff. I don't really fit in. I, this guy I do. So this guy I fit into. You're not a douchebag. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not a full blown douchebag. Um, this guy I fit into, but the other group of that whole show, definitely not. Definitely don't fit in. Tr- trying to hang out with them to get some phone numbers of some of the girls so you can try. No, I got. Them. Listen, let's be real here. We got plenty of girls. Hell, this show is a magnet for girls. Look how many dates Jimmy got out of it the, the first week of the show, I believe. <laughs> he just we had to we had to cut Jimmy off. <laughs> we had to stop him, didn't we, Jimmy? I think so. Jimmy yeah. Said the, the, we we were over at uh, Tailgaters. No, we got one there. We were somewhere like, dude, we'll just stop it. Turn yeah. it down a notch. You know, let's, this show is a magnet for chicks, apparently. But uh, I'm excited. Listen, Jimmy, can you pull up that video? Yes. I want to talk to you about GPS. Sam, do you have a GPS? No. Do you have it on I, your phone? I have it on my phone, yeah. Okay. Uh, Jimmy, are you using GPS much? Uh, that's the only way I can get around anywhere. Okay. We are so dependent upon GPS nowadays. And I always think, like, I can't imagine the world without these uh, these smartphones. Mm-hmm. But I want to show you what happened. Now, speaking of Pugs, I was like, Pugs, let's go check out this chick. She's a little bit far, but it's late at night. Let's go grab her and uh, bring her Let's back to Dallas. <laughs> well, she wanted to be grabbed. But like, we'll go pick her up. But it's like, is, you're not going to do this. Goes, yeah, why Why not, dude? Let's go get her. She means she, she wanted to put, to put out. I'm trying to be quiet because are those kids still here? No, I think they're gone, man. They're gone. She like, wanted you and Pugs. And no, I don't know her. about that. But Pugs, is, I was trying to get him. I was trying to push him in the lines down a little bit. And I felt like she would definitely be down for that, maybe. Uh huh. And so, uh, but I, I couldn't. I was like, I'll go get her. I, you know. So let me show what happened. Thinks the GPS though, and not knowing how to work these things. Pull up the first video. There's, there's two videos. One, up, one where I'm talking, okay. and one you just see like the road. Do you know the difference? To, you're gonna have to tell me which one this one is. But uh, there you go. That one. Okay. Look at this video, Sam. Can you? See, you can't see it. Uh, off the floor. That's my GPS. I'm out in the middle of nowhere, going down rock roads. Hear the noise? Yeah. Those are, uh, those are, uh, this is where I'm at. This is not having a Tom Tom and trying to use this damn GPS off my iPhone. Those are rocks hitting the bottom of my car, the banging. These are the worst. This. this is the worst part, actually, especially for Google Maps, and it's because it's not a proper road. You know All what right, I mean? Now, Here's the deal. So I, I I don't realize that on my on your phone you have the walking setting, the right. driving setting, and the bus route or biking set or something. 
And I'm on the run. Like, why? And I was, dude, I was lost for over an hour. I could not get out of this area. I would take turn after turn. It was the worst. It was like I was in a maze of grass and tall weeds and branches hanging on the road. I'm in a rock road, man, trying to pick some shit. I'm like, this has got to be a joke. So go to the next video. Okay. The document. It, could not, it was so just, I was in awe what was going on. Now, this is in one. Turn the video on it. Okay. I didn't come on this. I'm in the middle of nowhere right now. Look at this. It's pitch black. You can't see. I'm fucking part of the Blair Witch Project, man. <laughs> I've been driving around circles. I can't seem to find my way out of this area. I'm just trying to find an i30 on this GPS on this iPhone. Is not. This is why I need Tom Tom back. But anyway. This road here, you know, I think it was totally dark, dead ends to nothing, so, help. <laughs> Here's the thing, I was being serious when I was like, I was not going to cry, uh -huh. but I've spent over an hour yeah. lost. I cannot get out of this place. Mm -hmm. To say I can't get out to save my life, and I'm like, oh my God, I'm, and I'm, by the way, I'm, I'm getting close to E. Now, I'm not on E, but oh, I'm real wow. close. I'm like, dude, I've only got so much. So I had to sit there and think about things for a while, just try to conserve gas. I was looking up to the sky. I was using all the, listening to the wind blow. I was uh, smelling things, trying to figure out which direction I could find the road, man. And I'm calling this girl like, what, do you live on a dirt road? <laughs> Brandon's going through every last thing that he can possibly do that has nothing to do with finding your way back. Like, he's like... <laughs> he's like Licking his finger, putting it up. Yep, wind's going that way. Not sure if that's the right way to go home, but wind's definitely going that way. I kept dead ending into a creek bed that was dried up. Like, oh, dude, I was like, I don't even know how to. That's one of the most. You don't even know how to describe where you're at. Other than there's rocks and there's. I mean, no, that's everywhere out there in the country. Right. And I was like, I don't know how to even call for help. What do I do? Send up a flare? Yeah, you know smoke I mean? signals. I really did. I was at a loss. Like, I don't know if I can get my way out of here. And I yeah. was like, I'm running out of gas. I'm running low. I had no food, no water. And uh, I was like, man, thank God Pugs didn't come because he was skeptical about coming anyway like, that long of a drive. And here I am just like lost forever. Wow. And so that's when I discovered that there's different modes. There's walk mode. There's drive mode. And I was on the walk mode. How I got out of my car and walked through with snakes and reptiles all over the place and spiders and who knows what else out in those fields. Wow. I mean, I, I had no weapons. I mean, it was bad, man. You had your iPhone, though. I had my iPhone. And guess what? I had shorts on, so the tall brush would have got me itching. I would have been itching. Yes. Uh, you were uh, very triggers. uncomfortable. Yeah, I was stuck, bro. <laughs> and I didn't know if I should just wait for daylight. You know, I didn't know what to start a fire. Right. And let the smoke kind of attract people. Cause, you know, I don't know, man. But that's what happened. That's one of my little adventures uh, last summer. And I thought I'd share that with you guys. It yeah. was it was horrible. Just because I was trying to get my buddy a, a chick. You know what I mean? That's what you were, you know, you were doing the right thing. Yeah. So now she also does stuff like cleans houses and stuff like that. And she's a cute girl. So I was like, hey, I'll go pick her up. One? Is she what? Is she the topless one? I'm... That describes a lot of people on my phone. That my phone. I used to have a topless maid come in. Didn't oh yeah, 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 yes, 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 yes. She she worked for yeah. That's that is it. Yeah, correct. There you go, dude. Is that not scary, Jimmy? That is, man. I've actually been in a uh, situation kind of like that because um, I was going out to uh, an observatory, and uh, it's out in the middle of nowhere. I'm not a country guy, as we were kind of talking about earlier. And, uh, yeah, I think, were you with us, Sam? Yeah, I was driving. Yeah, was yeah. Scared. Oh, my God. We were just going in circles. We had no idea how to get out of this place. And, again, Google Maps was useless because they weren't proper roads. So We tried to take a shortcut through this, I want to say construction area, but, like, it had, like, what, gas towers or oil tank towers or something. Mm -hmm. And it was late at night, and there was, like, one house in the middle of it. Like it was Friday the 13th. Uh huh. And then we took this road and we got to where the other road was to go to the observatory. But there was a, it was a, it was a locked. There was like a gate. Okay. So we couldn't get out that way. And then we couldn't figure out how we got in there. And we were just driving around and driving around. Go back to the original gate that we came in. Now that one's locked. So, like that, we've basically been locked in, is what we're under the assumption of in the middle of the night. 
So yeah. it felt like we were going to be there for a night as well. Now, at least you had each other to comfort each other, okay? Yes. How well, we had Jimmy's brother and his little nephew that was, at the time, what, two years old, maybe? Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Even worse. Oh. Yeah. So wow. we uh, we dropped the nephew Left off the side of the card. In the house. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and then uh, went home. No, seriously, there was a big house there, like, that somebody might live in that looked like a Friday the 13th type deal or a hor- any horror movie where there's a house in the middle of nowhere. Uh huh. Seriously, th- this house was just in the middle of this huge... It could be the was. stock photo of one of the creepiest movies ever. So, yeah. I totally understand your pain, man. That That's not fun. That's why I don't like going into the country. The country's no good for anybody. What, what, did y'all knock... Were you going to knock on the door of the house? I was about to because we couldn't get any phone service. And my my tank was like on a quarter of a tank too, so I'm thinking we're gonna run out of gas if we keep driving around. So, at the end of the, what do you what did y'all actually do to get out of there finally? Well, it turns out one of the routes that we tried to originally go out, we went back down that way again. Uh huh. And it turns out the lock was kind of old, and you guys were able to just kick it. Yeah. And we were able to open the gate. We take out, get out, take a right, and what we want was right there. Wow. A little kick dough action. Now, what would you do if you're in my shoes though? Let's just say my phone went dead. What, what's your survival mode if you're in my shoes by myself? Survival mode? Uh, what what, what kind do? of wires do you? Well, you got an iPhone. No, I said my phone goes dead. I'm just My phone's now dead. What do you do? Well, well I know. Uh, uh, let's just say I'm, I have a phone with no GPS. Uh-huh. How would you handle the situation? Um, well, I mean, it depends. I would actually go MacGyver on that thing. If it's one of these uh, micro things, you can actually, if you get like a normal wire... Uh-huh. Like uh, you know, like a any type of wire that has like the double-ended ends, so you can go in there and cut it, mm-hmm. take both ends of the wire, go to the positive and negative charge on your battery, okay, put it onto that, and then on here, there's two different ports where it's positive and negative. Well, let's let's say your phone's still charged. How do you get out of that situation? How would you get yourself out of there without the GPS? Call working? people crying all yeah, night. Yeah, but how do you tell them how to find you? I mean, I'm <laughs> in the middle of the, in the woods. Uh, you don't have GPS at all? No GPS. You can use your wireless signal to at least break it down to about like a quarter mile area. So then you can send that. How do you do I mean, how, who are you sending it to? Um, well, you can send it to anybody over text message. So like um, if you're able to actually like break it down to like within a quarter mile area and then they'll be able to at least see that circle of an area that you're you're, in to do it you're using your gps i said no gps no no no. you're using your wireless signal so it's not saying that your exact gps coordinate it's saying you're in this area so i can send that to you somehow Uh uh-huh do it to me right now okay i'd like to see how this works but you're still like a quarter of a mile. That's a lot of distance there, man. It is, but it's your only chance, really. <laughs> yeah. I personally was at the point where I just thought I was going to pull over and sleep in the car uh-huh. and wait for daylight. Because I'm figuring, you know, with daylight, you can see certain things you can't see at night. Right. And uh, maybe signage. I was looking for signs, but I just kept going in a circle. It lasted for over an hour, man. And it was just, wow, it was just such a weird moment. I'm like, I cannot believe this is happening to me. Sam? Would you? What would you do? Go to the fetal position? Okay, probably. No. Yeah, I'd be freaking out. If you see here, it's showing my location. It's only accurate to 900 meters. How can you not say that's not GPS related when you show me a map of the streets? Um, well, the reason, the way that this is picking up the location isn't based on GPS, so it's not going off of like the satellites up over our atmosphere. What okay. this is going is based off of the cell towers that this thing's communicating with. So there's a, a close enough cell tower. It says, hey, you're within not striking distance of okay. that one. So, like, uh, that's how it finds out this. And then with this, I can just share my location with you. So, like, you know, you'll just have to tell them, hey, look, not sure that uh, this is exactly where I am. But, you know, if you want to meet me. All right. Let's say the let's say their phone's not working. What are we going to do? Um, at that point, it's it's getting pretty ugly, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, do you all get out and start walking or you just wait for the morning? Uh, I wait for the morning. Wait for the morning. Okay. I think you have to. And then, um, you know, I actually have a, a little uh, two-man tent usually in the back of my... You're kidding <laughs> me. In the back of my trunk. So you keep a two-man tent for Why these not? reasons? Why not? So, you know, set up. Set up shop, man. Get good to work. For, good for you, you survivalist. Yeah. Oh, uh, I am, dude. I'm a survivalist. I got canned foods back there. <laughs> like, just in case, man. Like, wow. if you're driving down the street and all of a sudden you're like, oh, we gotta, we gotta pitch a tent here. You know, you gotta live. So, cool. yeah. Sam, you got something to say? No. Okay. You grab the mic. He has um, oh, no. some uh, words of encouragement for people that are out there lost, stuck <laughs> in, their t- in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. I mean, you know what's crazy is that's. 
outside of Dallas, you know what I mean? Uh-huh. But it's like it's like you don't even remember these places exist that are like rocky roads and all, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's like, I'm going to tell you something. If someone was to get killed and you put them out there, how would you ever find them, the body? I mean, it's so weird when the bodies pop up. Like, in the event someone was to pass away and, and that was with me and I, and I killed them by accident because mm-hmm. um, it wasn't did it on purpose, I, that's the place to dump them. Yep, they haven't found any of mine, so. <laughs> all right. Cool. All right, listen, man, I am Sunbrew Brandon, and I – I think we're gonna have to t- t- turn the show off for today. Okay. Come back tomorrow, but we tomorrow we should have the uh, iPhones attachments or whatever it is uh, working. You can listen from your phone. Yes. Podcast going on. We are live today at Dallas Furniture. Uh, check out furnituregroups.com. Call them up nine seven two two four one four 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 one. Right there by In and Out Burger, man. Uh, just across the uh, about twenty feet away from the front door. Uh, come on, check these out, man. Give them some business, and uh, tomorrow we'll be in the Sunbrew Studios. Very cool. I think we'll uh, talk some fitness, talk about uh, Girl of the Week coming back, get okay. our voting going on. So uh, I'm out of here, man. I'm Sunbury, and I'm out. I'm Jimmy. Later, guys. <laughs>